It is the most wonderful, wonderful time of the year. And no, it's not Christmas. It's the madness. And we will be here every second of the way with you guys tonight for Texas Tech, who will face off against the NC State Wolfpack here in, well, it's supposed to be 40 minutes, but good luck with that at this point with the way the Kentucky and Oakland game is going. I am R.C. Maxfield. He is Austin Massey. As I mentioned, we will be leading you throughout the whole night. We'll preview the game a little bit. We'll have live play-by-play -play on here with a scoreboard that you can see. And then we'll also be answering your comments as well. Austin, my man, how you doing? Man, I'm doing good. I am uh, locked into this Kentucky-Oakland game right now. 57-52. Um, man, Texas Tech, they get the win. They could be playing Oakland. So we'll see what happens. The good guys. The good guys, too, in this scenario, at least right now, if you're a Tech fan in the sense of uh, who is winning this game. Yeah, absolutely. But, no, super excited. Uh this is going to be a fantastic uh, game with with NC State guys. Like this is a team that's coming off of a historic five kind of five wins in five days kind of thing. They beat the number one seed in, in UNC. Um, this team is hot. I'm excited to talk about them a little bit. Yeah, and we'll do that here in just a little bit. But before we do, I know there's quite a bit of people watching, and I expect quite a few to keep trickling on in closer to game time and during the game as well. So if you haven't already, if you're watching on YouTube, like the video. And if you're on Twitter, retweet, favorite it, and you'll get a shout out before we actually get into the nitty gritty of play by play and everything like that. But Austin, what do you want to start with in terms of this NC State team? I think if we're being honest with ourselves, we've probably got to start with the DJ times two, right? in terms of DJ Horn and DJ Burns. And no, I'm not calling it, I'm not saying DJ Burns is times two because he's so large either. I'm not <laughs> saying that, um, even though I, I definitely could. Uh, but where do you want to start? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a good place to start. I think that DJ Horn, um, you know, you start with him, right? He obviously leads the team in scoring, um, dynamic guard, uh, does a little bit of everything. He's their best three-point shooter by far. The one thing I will say about this team is they don't have many three point shooters. Um, they only have two guys like in their core rotation that shoot it over 36 percent from deep. So something to keep an eye on. Um, another thing that I noticed when kind of just taking a look at their core rotation, they really play about a seven man rotation um, and they're they're actually pretty short. Um, they have three guys in their starting lineup that are six, three and under. Um, so I think they can match Texas Tech's quickness um, off the ball and, and offensively. So that is something to keep an eye on right off the bat. Yeah, I, that's one thing that I noticed, too, looking at them was the sense of like they've got some bona fide pros on there. Obviously, it's led by DJ Horn. I mean, it would not shock me if he plays in the NBA for a good 10 years. Um, he's just a certified bucket. Right. Um, but outside of Diaria one of their bigs, they don't really have much length. It's just kind of like, if you think they're 6'4", their wingspan is probably 6'4". Like, Diaria is the only guy that can really guard, I would say, one through five with how gifted he is after watching him play. Um, but he's really the only guy that kind of stands out as that prototypical NBA-type wing that NC State has. And now... They've got some playmakers on there, obviously led by DJ Burns, obviously led by DJ Horn as well. But I'm interested to see how Texas Tech really navigates the bigs for NC State, because if you watch what they've done in Big 12 play or excuse me, ACC play, they've really been abused in yeah. terms of when those bigs get away from the basket and the pick and roll and what does Texas Tech love to run more than damn near any team in the country? A good pick and roll, okay? And so I'm fascinated to see how this works. We'll give you the injury updates once we have them on Warren Washington as well as Darion Williams. I Right now, I would be pretty surprised if we're being honest about it if we don't see both. In what capacity? That's TBD. But I would be pretty surprised if both of them are not suited up for this game. Before we get any further, though, let me know where y'all are watching from in the comments. We've got just about 300 people right now, and I'm expecting Austin. I told Austin earlier, I think when the numbers are all said and done, I don't know how many hours we will be live here because good Lord knows with college basketball and how many stoppages they have. Um, but I think we can get in totality 
like 20,000 people to watch this. I truly believe it. Not at all at one time, but I think we can. So let me know where y'all are watching from. We got Lubbock. We've got Houston. We got Ryan in here. Thomas. Um, we've got Seeloff. We got Kim. Chase. Uh, we got Adventures. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that town's name, but it, his name is Mr. Jack. Then we've got Renee. We've got David. We've got Jackson and a few others. So let us know where you're watching from, and we'll give you a shout out here in just a second. And oh, by the way, we will be keeping you up to date on this Oakland game because it is getting spicy. And I mean spicy in Pittsburgh for the Golden Grizzlies. Also, Austin, I don't know how you feel about that. That's a dope ass nickname. The, the Golden, Golden Grizzlies. I like it. Also, arguably the coolest court in college basketball, but I digress um, from that standpoint. Um, for those that don't know, it is the six seed Texas Tech against the 11 seed NC State tonight. It will take place at PPG Paints Arena. You can watch it on CBS. But what I advise you to do is this. I know multiple people told me they were doing this, Austin, by the way. Watch us on your watch us on your phone, right? And then you have the game on your TV. Yep. Best way to do it. Or you can do the other way around, but I would probably advise the other, but just me. Um, so, yeah, and the game is projected to start at 840 Central Time. Good fucking luck. Um, that's not happening. Um, but let's talk about a little bit more of the preview here, Austin. And I want to talk about the keys to the game because I think there's three big ones. And we kind of already talked about one of them. Um, at least I did. And in, in the pick and roll. I think that that's a big one for Tech in the sense of, I've gone into it a little bit, but Texas Tech is one of those teams where when they are good in the pick and roll, they get so many open shots for guys like Kerwin, uh, for guys like Pop, Darion, Chance, whoever it may be. And I think that that's a critical part to tonight because one of my other keys in this one, Austin, and if you don't agree, by all means, tell me. I think Texas Tech has to shoot 35% from three. And the reason being is this. If you look at their wins in the Big 12, they have shot in 10 of them 33% or higher. It, it's a recipe for success for them in that regard. So I'm very interested to see that because I do think NC State, they proved to be pretty solid defensively in the ACC tournament. Um, does that carry over into the NCAA tournament? Bigger question because I've been talking to a lot of NC State people and they they like the, my evaluation in the sense of NC State when they are cold is really bad. They're they're not a good basketball team in a lot of regards when they're cold and they force things. But when they're hot and I mean it's hard to say anything else right now um, for them. They can beat anybody, and they proved that in the ACC tournament. Whether that was against Duke, whether that was against North Carolina, whether that was against that godforsaken state that starts with a V. Okay, so. It is what it is in that regard. And then the other one I think is kind of obvious. It's win the rebounding battle. Texas Tech has won for their last five games, and each game they've won, they've won the rebounding battle. It's that simple. And I don't know if you heard this stat or saw it earlier, Austin. Maybe we sent it in a group chat that we're in. Um, Texas Tech is 19-0 and when they hold teams to 75 points or fewer. Yeah, I actually didn't realize that, by the way. Me neither. <laughs> that was, me neither. That was like news to me. I was like, oh, great. I, I, I like try to pride myself on knowing all the stats. And I'm like, I had no clue. Um, so. But yeah, I mean, this is a team that, you know, there's it's hard to get a real read on them, right? Because they were so inconsistent throughout the conference play. And then they go in and win five games in five days. Their efficiency metrics, the last 10 games are really good. Um, you could hop on to Bart Torvik and take a look um, if you're at home, kind of you know following along. But the last 10 games, RC, they are ranked in the top 20 in adjusted offense. Um, their defense, not so impressive. They're actually right at about 125 in adjusted defense for the last 10. Um, but that that offensive number is what I, the one I'm circling because Texas Tech has been inconsistent defensively at times. Um, so what version of Texas Tech are we going to get tonight? Are we going to get the version of Texas Tech where, you know, they put up to, uh, a couple of their best defensive performances the last, you know, three games or so, uh, scratch the Houston game? Um, or are we going to get the the kind of soft, um, you know, lazy kind of defense that we've seen at times? And then, like you said, the rebounding battle, right? What, what Texas Tech rebounding team are we going to get? Are we going to have McMillan and Kerwin, you know, jump in for, for rebounds or are they going to be sitting watching the ball? Um, so... It's going to be fascinating because both these teams 
are really good when they're rolling and they also can be pretty bad when they're not playing very well. Um, so super interesting matchup. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those deals where I think this is actually one of my, like, and obviously there's a Texas tech bias involved in this, but I really do think this was when the bracket was revealed, one of those matchups that really caught my eye in the sense that obviously NC state is arguably the hottest team in the country. You know, um, what they did in D.C. in the ACC tournament is really unheard of in a lot of ways. Um, but also just because I do think Texas Tech matches up pretty damn well against them um, in the sense that and I think it was Kim who just said it a little while ago in the chat. I want to be sure I give credit here. It was Kim. People forget that NC State was 17 and 14 just a couple weeks ago. They were a 10 seed in the ACC tournament now give them all the credit in the world they won that thing or else they wouldn't be in this conversation right now um that being said is there a hangover i don't think there will be but there could be um but from a texas tech perspective i think they do match up pretty well do the red raiders especially if you get the likes of darion back and warren obviously i think they're going to be in limited roles how limited i mean really only the coaching staff knows that but I do think we see them suit up tonight, and that's going to be pivotal for Texas Tech. Also, right now, Oakland currently leads Kentucky 67-65 um, with about, what, 409 remaining in that one. The winner of Texas Tech, NC State, plays the winner of that one. And, oh, buddy, we've got a lot to talk about there. Let's get to a couple shout-outs as we've got over 600 people listening to us between Twitter and YouTube. If you haven't already on YouTube, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. And if you're watching on Twitter, which I know a lot of y'all are, be sure to retweet, favorite, and then well, tell me where you're watching from as well. All right, here we go. Uh, we've got Kim in Puerto Rico. Well, that's nice. Uh, way to rub it in, Kim. Um, we've got Chase. We've also got where we see here. We got Steve from College Station, Texas. Oh, that's good. At least you're rooting for the good guys tonight. We got El Paso. We've got Tulsa. We've got Ty saying, damn it, RC. I don't have enough screens to watch all these games and you. Yeah, I well, I appreciate you being here, Ty. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep you informed for sure. Um, Jason says, come on, Oakland. We've got Slayton, Texas in the house saying, wreck em, baby. We've got Mr. Jeff in China. He is a Red Raider just over there, so letting people know. Um, watching from Hill Air Force Base in Utah. There we go. We've got New Bronzefolds in the house, Fort Worth, Colorado, Plano. Somebody said they're watching out my window. Joke's on you. My house doesn't have windows. Ha! Um, Castle Rock, Colorado. We've got somebody watching in Dallas. Dallas man says, let's fucking go tech. Yes, this is a family show. Sorry for cursing. If you get the sketch reference, good for you. Um, let's also see here. David says, I'm going to put on CBS, but it's going to be on mute. And I got y'all on the laptop. Be David, be David. Okay. Be David. All right. We got Vezzi, who's been one of the more classy NC state fans in the comments. If I'm being honest about it, Austin, we've had some, we've had some, um, non-classy fans, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna paint a broad brush when it comes to NC state. Vessi is a model citizen here. And really has brought some good info. So I'll read this. During the season, probably not too many, but State literally figured out who they were when they were forced to play without DJ Horn in the first game of the ACC tournament. That Again, Fancy bringing good information there. That's good to know. Um, Gabe says, what time do you think we'll start? I mean, probably midnight at this rate. Just kidding. Um, 9-10? That feels right. 9-10, 9-15? Yeah, that feels right. Um Let's see where else we got. Watching from Lubbock. Um, excited tonight. We got Dallas in here. Um, we got Ty Rogers saying, thank you, brother. Do you get that reference, Austin? I don't. Oh, damn. <laughs> damn. That's okay, brother. <laughs> Shout out to Sketch. Uh, but no, in all honesty, it's going to be oh. a lot of fun tonight. We got 750 people with us right now, and I'm sure that number will balloon once the game gets started. Again, Oakland, 67 65 over Kentucky, four minutes remaining. And in fact, Austin, let's go ahead and switch up the brand on the screen switch right now, that. shall we? Let's do this. I got it pulled up on my iPad right here. I'm I'm locked in. 
Let's do it. You can see the score right there. And by the way, real quick, shameless plug. Actually, not shameless at all. I don't care. Go to scarletandblackinsider.com. Subscribe. First month is a dollar. We're going to keep you up to date on everything Texas Tech during their tournament run. And oh, by the way, we've already got portal news on there as well in terms of the latest conversations. Jacob Harris over at Portal Report with us as well at Scarlet and Black Insider killing it. Austin with good info as well. So join the fastest growing community in the Texas Tech space over on Scarlet and Black Insider. And your first month is a dollar. There's no better deal in the space right now. You can see the score on the screen right now. Got about 3.55 remaining. They just went to the under four media time out, out in Pittsburgh. Can the Golden Grizzlies, iconic name, by the way, absolutely love it. Can they hold on and upset the fighting John Calipari's and send them back to Lexington with a big fat L? Let us know in the chat. Who, who you got? You got 355 remaining. Who are you taking? Just let me know. Just type O for Oakland or K for Kentucky. Let us know. Let's see here. Um, about to shoot some free throws too. Oakland is. Yeah. Apparently RJ is starting. I've been really saying that, that that was going to be the case regardless um, from the standpoint of I would be literally shocked if Warren Washington in his first game back started because – Austin, correct me if I'm wrong on this. This is kind of how I view it. I think they're going to pick and choose Warren's minutes to where they need it most. So I think he plays between 10 and 15 minutes, and you'll see him in three and four minute stretches, but in the most pivotal points for the Red Raiders, if he looks good. Okay. That's kind of what I think happens. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't mind it, honestly, because the one thing I worry about, um, Robert Jennings, pretty foul prone. Yalaho, um, he's going to be just a body tonight. You know, he's going to have to go in there and bang up with Burns um, down on the low block. Um, but kind of keeps Warren fresh, keeps him out of foul trouble potentially. I don't hate it. Um, I really don't want Darian Williams guarding Burns too much, uh, at least in the first half of the game. Um, if, he, if he picks up two fouls early in this game, it's not going to be good for Texas Tech. I'm cool with Warren coming off the bench. I'm still very anxious to kind of see him, you know, Go grab that first rebound. You never really know how that foot's going to react. Um, but yeah, I, I don't hate it. I think Rob can, Rob has struggled at times in the low block, um, you know, against bigger players like that. But um, I expect him to kind of give it his all tonight. Yeah, we've got the starting lineups right now. We'll start with the 11 seed NC State Wolfpack starting at guard. We've got DJ Horn. They go O'Connell, Morsell, uh, Diaria and then DJ Burns Jr. Obviously, Kevin Keats is the head coach. As for the Red Raiders, Pop Isaacs, Joe Toussaint, Kerwin Walton, Robert Jennings, and welcome back, Darion Williams, the Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, I shouldn't say native. It's actually from uh, Sacramento. And uh, good to have him back. He will be in the starting lineup for the Red Raiders. And if Warren Washington is back, he will be coming off the bench. But the news right now in Pittsburgh is what is on your screen currently. Number 14 seeded Oakland. Given Kentucky as much of the business as possible here yeah. with about four minutes left. And one more time, if you haven't already, be sure to like the video. If you're watching on YouTube, I know about 100 of y'all are. Like it over there and also hit that subscribe button. And if you're watching on Twitter, retweet favorite. And in fact, let me go in there and uh, see how many we got watching over on Twitter. We got about 850. That's not too bad. I like it. I like it. We'll keep going up. Um, but let's give a couple of shout outs in terms of the whole uh, favorite situation as well on here. Because, well, I told you all we would do that. And we'll do it periodically throughout the show. Well, my wife is at the Mavericks game, but she liked it. That's called supporting your spouse. Love to see it. Um, we've got Eric. Eric. Uh, <laughs> uh, I cracked myself up too much. That's probably not a good thing. Um, and then we've got Lindy. We've got Kobe. We've got Jay, Woody, Jack. We've got a doctor in the house. What up? Dr. Pickens. And then we've got Landon as well, as well as a few others on there. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Once again, if you want a shout out, well, easiest way to do that is like the video. Also, Oakland now up five. With 3.33 remaining, make it six. They make their next free throw. Whew, this is going to be I fun. A they, couple more. 
I think they fouled him on a three, RC. I think he's about to shoot three free throws. He's already knocked serious? on two of them. Yeah, they're – Oh, if makes, they, they shot down the guy that's me at the wreck that doesn't understand two pointers exist. You love to see it. That that's my that's my favorite thing is going to the wreck and just jacking them up. And he wow. missed the last one. The it last feels one. like these free throws are going to come back and cost Oakland really bad. They're shooting, as you can see on your screen, fifty three percent from the free throw line. Um, yes. That's not ideal, but they get the rebound there. No, they lose Ooh, it. No, nope. they called the foul. They wow. secured it, but they called a foul. That's a rough call. Not ideal there. Yeah, not ideal. Uh, we got Jay saying Oakland. Love to hear that. We also have, uh, well, TJ watching from DFW. We've got Elgin, Texas in the house. Uh, we've got John watching from a Windstar. Lucky you. Nice. Lucky you. I mean, legalize it, Texas, please. And begging you, shout out to Texas Tech Men's Soccer Club for retweeting there. And then we've got Levi in here as well. We've got Roman Gonzalez um, who liked it as well. So appreciate y'all tuning in. We've got over 900 people on YouTube or on Twitter, excuse me, and just over 75 over on YouTube. So we love that right there. Um, Kentucky with the made three, 71 wow. 68, three minutes remaining in Pittsburgh. Let me know again. I, do you think Oakland or Kentucky is going to win? Let me know in the chat. I think, it, again, I told Austin before we went live, and he can call me on my BS. I said if Oakland was within four, with four minutes or less remaining, I think they win this basketball game. Another three for him, and he's way off. Oh my wow. Goodness. He just threw that up. I mean, not a good shot. Feels like that's his game at this point. <laughs> um, wow. Here we go, though. This this is going to be crazy in the sense of, again, remember, why is this game so important if you're a Texas Tech fan? Well, potentially, this is who Texas Tech would play in the next round of the NCAA tournament um, if they were to beat NC State. So this is a big one right here. Um, Oakland up in this one, 71-68. Make it 73-68. Wow. After a made jumper off of a fadeaway, two minutes a, left, uh, and the 14 seed is leading by five over a top 15 team in the country in Kentucky. Top of the key, Rob Dillingham goes left, fakes back, fadeaway jumper blocked, gets his own rebound. Back, shot clock does not reset. Another three for Kentucky, way outside, and it's a two point oof. game. Wow. 143 remaining. This is a uh, this is what March is all about. This is this is it right here. You want to see the upsets. This is really what you want to see. A minute 20 remaining. Floater, no good. Kentucky gets the rebound and has a chance to tie or take the lead. And it's stolen. Oakland on the fast break. Up, oh, fouled. And there will be free oh. throws with 117 remaining. Up two are the Golden Grizzlies. Also, again, Golden Grizzlies, badass name. Just a badass name, okay? Don't care who knows about it. This is sensational right here. Just a great play. Number four for them has been playing phenomenal um, tonight for the Golden Grizzlies. I mean, he truly has been sensational. Two shots here at the line with a minute 17 remaining, and he makes both of them. 75-71. Oakland, 117 remaining. The either play Texas Tech or NC State on Saturday. By the way, Austin, do you know what Saturday is? Uh, I do not. If it helps you, it's in my Twitter name, 323. Birthday, baby. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, okay. Oh, what a shot from Kentucky. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Is that Dillingham? We've got a game here. Wow. Here we go. Clock is running. Oakland trying to beat that full court press from Kentucky. They get wow. it into the corner. 50 seconds remaining. Oakland for three. Bang. Golden Bears up four. Oh, buddy. Oh, Man, buddy. I think you're a little ahead of me, RC. Oh my God, oh, buddy! I'm I'm watching the shot right now. What a shot from the corner. Bang. Wow! 
28 seconds remaining. Oh, real time the out. Golden okay. Bears. Wow. What a oh, shot. Buddy. Holy oh, smokes. My goodness. 28.8 seconds remaining. Oakland leads by four. Wow. Woo. Incredible. And it wasn't the guy that's just jacking up threes the whole no. time. But you know what's going to – we talk about it all the time in college basketball, Austin. The great equalizer in this game, the three-point shot. Three-point shot. And when you shoot nearly 50% from three, you got a good shot. You got a good shot at winning. Um Wow. I'm also going to keep up my neighbors tonight. Sorry in advance. Um, I know they can't hear that, but whatever. It's fine. Um, wow. What a shot right there. Again, the Kentucky fans just in disarray right now. Hands on heads. Hands covering faces. Oakland may have some babies created tonight around that campus. 78-74. Still some time for the Wildcats. Prayers have never, never been done this much in Lexington as of right now. They actually put 0.2 more seconds on the clock, 29 seconds even in this one. 78-74, 14 seeded Oakland currently beating three seed Kentucky in Pittsburgh. The winner of this game will play the winner of Texas Tech and NC State on Saturday. Here we go. Two possession game. That, that's big, okay, in the sense of now if you're Oakland, you can almost play the free throw game and be smart here, right? You don't feel like you have to – if Kentucky blows past you, hey, let them go. Let them go here, you know, at that point kind of deal. And just yeah, play no the foul here. Game. No foul. Here we go. Kentucky's probably going to – Coming up. Here too. Oh, wait, wow, that's – He missed it. Rebound, Oakland. Not a good shot. Wow. They're going to the line. Wow. 18 seconds remaining. Oakland leads 78-74. Could I gotta we get have an out. upset? I got to get a tweet out, RC. I got to get a tweet out. Do it. My goodness. That was just a bad shot. You don't need awful, a three awful, there. Awful, awful, You don't need awful a three. I mean, I guess – I don't hate the three. Just don't uh, – I don't know. Off the shot selection, wholeheartedly agree with you there. Wow, RC, did you see some of the did you see some of the pregame interviews? I felt like Oakland just had a swag and a confidence. They were just like, "We're playing with house money. We're not scared. Like we've already made it." They weren't didn't. They the they, team, weren't they the team that said, "We're not going to be surprised when we win"? Is it is, was was that them? It may have been them. It may have been. I can't remember. It was either yeah. Oakland or what was it? I think it was Oakland. Yeah, I mean, they played phenomenal. I don't know if they'll shoot 50% again from three, but my goodness. Oh, Stanford, um, like Lauren said, yeah, Stanford. That's who it was, RC. There we go. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stanford for Kansas. Yeah, great call there, Lauren, um, on that front. Also, a game I have a little bit of quiche on, people. Sanford Moneyline, baby. Get me those odds. Oh, he missed it. Missed first free throw. The, 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 to get to five is big, and he makes it here. 79, 74, 18 seconds left. Three timeouts hmm. for Kentucky. I would assume they take one. They don't. Yeah. Ooh, there wow. they go. Four seconds left. It's going to happen. Oh, my gosh. It's going to happen. Over. Oakland. Wow. Oakland is going to beat Kentucky. Rebound, Oakland. Call it. Let's go home. Everyone's 4. brackets 9. are busted. <laughs> it, oh, there goes everyone's goodness. brackets. Wow. Oh, that ball in Kentucky. Two possession game, though, 4.9. Wow. Just be smart if you're Oakland. Let them get any shot you want. That's what you got to do. But Kentucky will call a timeout. But this game, wow. 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 I don't even know what else to say, but wow. Just wow. Got 1,100 people in here. Appreciate y'all spending some of your Thursday night with us. As of right now, it looks like the winner of Texas Tech and NC State will face off against the Golden Grizzlies of Oakland on Saturday. Yeah. Unbelievable. This one's stuff. over, RC. It's over. There, there, I mean, I, four I, seconds, I, it's over. <laughs> I want to see I want to see triple zeros. That's all I want to see. Wow. I want to see triple zeros. Um, this was the thing you worried about, though, with Kentucky, right? They're so young. They've, they've you got a lot of guys that haven't played in the tournament. You're going against a, a team who's got nothing to lose. It's like... Man, this is what a great story, though, for Oakland. Uh, that is just incredible. Horizon League champs. 
Incredible. Get in as a 14 seed. Free throw. Here we go. Looks like they're reviewing to see who's going to get the ball here. Uh, Looks like it went off of the Oakland defense. Oh, off of his, off of his knee. Yeah. Yeah. After um, oh. hit it yeah. off of it. So. I guess if it's Kentucky's ball, it's technically not over. They could they could knock down a three, um, get a steal. It's the free and, throw game. It's the yeah. free throw game. Yeah, you got to foul him. I agree. True. And honestly, you know, it's one of those deals with 4.9. Yeah, that clearly went off Oakland. So yeah. it'll be Kentucky ball, 4.9 seconds remaining in this one. Again, the winner of this Oakland game and Kentucky game will face off against the winner of Texas Tech. And, well, NC State, the 6-11 matchup. They put 5.1 on. Kentucky gets the ball in. Easy two, smart play, 3.9 remaining. Oakland oh. calls their final timeout. That's not bad. They got that pretty quick. Yeah, they did. But smart play by Oakland to get the hell out of the way, too. You don't Agreed, even want to yeah. give them a shot at a free throw. Oof. This is crazy. <laughs> 3 I did not think we were going to be sitting here talking about Oakland. Wow. Yeah, this one's good. I, I, You can see the odds on your screen right there in terms of the money line, according to CBS, plus 550. Wow. Plus That's 550. That's pretty low. Like, if you really think about it, you know, they're still holding out hope. It's like. I got, yeah, one of my buddies, I don't know if he's watching tonight, but he convinced me. I wasn't as bullish as he was. He put $100 last year um, on Fairly. Oh, to beat Purdue, that was a nice little payout for him. Turned 100 into, I think, 850. Sheesh. Yeah, I only put like 20 on it, but it was nice. I'll, I'll say Good that morning. for sure. Um, let's see who we got in the chat here. We got Jay. We've got Brandon. We've got Texas Tech men's soccer. Shout out to you. We've got Lauren. We've got Brandon again. We've got Ryan with a quick baseball update. Tech losing 5-2 to two going into the bottom of the fifth. They are playing BYU. Um Renee also says Oakland could be up by 10 plus if they could shoot free throws. I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, shooting 57% from the free throw line, Kentucky almost doubling them in the free throw department in terms of attempts. But here we go. 3.9 remaining. Oakland looks like they're running a double out of bounds play here. Two guys out of bounds, everybody within the free throw line for them. They send a guy deep, they get it in and it's a quick foul by Kentucky. With the, no time coming no off the time. clock, huh. here it goes. Just need one here more than likely with Kentucky. Well, they, they have two timeouts, so you'll probably see another one. Is it one and but, one or no, double bonus? No, it should be double bonus. It double is double bonus. bonus. If they make or, one, it's over. He's got to make one. One and it's over. You Just would get think, out of the way. You would think. Unless they make go. like a half-court shot uh, super quick. Going to the free throw line, 3.9 remaining. Will he make – well, just – and, of course, he misses the first free throw. Oh, he missed the first one. Did we speak too soon on this being over? Oh, my God. If, if I jinxed it, Are we it, going I'm to actually... look foolish around no 1,300 people? It. It's possible. Dude, I, I've I gotta, said dumber things in my life before, Austin. I got a time. bad jinx, man. Sometimes I'll say stuff on Twitter, and it's like – and then there's like a 20-point swing. It's just – hopefully I did not jinx Oakland. Yeah. No, because we're going to say it's all your fault, by the way. I will take ownership. Then I will yeah, just no, it's gonna be all your fault. Texas Tech. So yeah, no, we'll be I fine. mean it's, it's gonna be all your fault. <laughs> Nobody else's. Definitely not the guys taking free throws. Um <laughs> what is there for everybody watching on YouTube? Like at? the video, hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on everything. Texas Tech men's basketball all year long. Be sure to go check out the Scarlet and Black Insider as well. We've got the latest Texas Tech news on the hardwood, but even more importantly, this time of year, the portal's going on right now. And there's a plethora of guys Texas Tech has shown interest in. We've got a complete list over there. And your first month is a dollar. So join the fastest growing Texas Tech community on the internet today in the Scarlet and Black Insider. And if you haven't already, be sure to go follow Austin on Twitter as well as myself. And they made the free made throw. made it, RC. It's over. Here we go. I feel, wait, why is there, did they foul? Why is there, Here why we go. Like three seconds. Another timeout. Timeout, okay. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, I, the the CBS like uh, broadcast that we're watching online is actually ahead of my YouTube. So this is tough. Yeah. 
Yeah, we will say for the play-by-play -play aspect of this, the scoreboard will update a little bit before I do. That's a good thing. I'm glad you brought that up, Austin, on that front from a transparency standpoint. So I'll be doing play-by-play. -play. Austin will bring in some commentary. Let us know what's going on across March Madness and everything like that. But the most important thing going on right now is this Oakland-Kentucky game. 3.9 remaining. Kentucky on the brink of elimination in the NCAA tournament in the first round as a three seed. Let's see what happens here. Just shambles right now, our Kentucky wow. fans. Absolute shambles. Kentucky, according to the broadcast, one in three in their last four NCAA tournament games. Do you think that Cal leaves for Louisville? I'm joking. I'm joking, obviously, but kind of not. And it's over. Wow. The Oakland I Golden think. Bears have officially beat the number three seed Kentucky Wildcats and will move on to the round of 32 to face off against the Texas Tech Red Raiders or the NC State Wolfpack. This is what March is about right here. You absolutely fucking love it. You'll love it. The Golden Bears and the guy that got the Monstars powers from deep move on to the round of 32. This wow. is why you love the madness. This is why you love the madness. The first time advancing to the second round, the round of 32 in school history. Have fun in Lexington this summer, boys. Have fun in Lexington. The Drake curse strikes again, Lauren Great said. Great call, Lauren. So Great true. Call. Man, wow. I, I mean, another comment in the in the YouTube, uh, Cal does less with more than just about any other coach. Actually, I mean, we're getting to a point where it's like you could literally make that argument. This is a team that people had, you know, pretty much penciled in to, to be a, a Final Four team. A lot of people did. Jeff Goodman, you know, he's obviously not watching right now, but this guy is How just, do you know? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> he should be because we could probably teach him a couple things. But, he, he, I mean, the, the only thing that I heard this guy say was this is the easiest route for Kentucky. Kentucky, they're, this is easy. Cal's probably smiling at the bracket reveal. And here they are. They lose to Oakland. I mean, look at this coach, man. He, he's not even – this dude's just chilling. I mean, no nerves. I, I will say this. He he had probably one of my favorite just full transparency moments for any coach leading up to this. He basically said, like, he's a Tom Izzo guy, right? So Tom Izzo is a coach that obviously has great success in the tournament, but he's known kind of as that old school guy in terms of his way of thinking. And Coach Kemp there at Oakland, he was like, Hey, I, I was I wasn't, you know, not paying attention to what the hell's going on in college basketball right now in the sense of you don't have to, you know, once you get your guys on campus, you have to keep recruiting them and build those genuine relationship aspect of things. And it's not just do as I say because I told you to anymore. Like these guys want to know why, and they want to know why in terms of the betterment of their careers and everything. Um, and he said he had to adjust. He's got three simple rules and they're very, very easy. Like, you know, show up on time, give your best effort each and every day, you know, be kind to your teammates, like very simple things outside of that. He's like, Hey, be yourself. Also, I'm not going to say this guy's name correctly. So please don't come at me, but Jack Golick have a fucking night. My guy, 32 points, 10 of 20 from three. This man went out there and he decided to have a three point competition by himself. You love to see it. You love to see. And the family's got the fat head. This is March, baby. You fucking love to see it. And Texas Tech or NC State will face off against Oakland on Saturday. So we'll see what time um, that game will be for whoever plays in that. But um, by the way, for those that care, there's only 6% of brackets um, still perfect. So there you go. Wow. I'm Reed Shepard, by the way, with uh, three points tonight. Uh, Rob Dillingham, 10. Uh, wow. I mean, this it feels like that the, the stakes just kind of got up for Texas Tech, right? Because I think that a lot of people, I mean, for both teams, um, they're, both, they're both there in the arena right now. They just saw what happened. They know now. 
hey, we 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 get this win. We're gonna go play a 14 seed. I mean, this this uh this Oakland team is scrappy. I don't think this is like an easy win by any means, but I think most teams would prefer to play Oakland than than Kentucky. Um, yeah. but wow, this is a huge this is massive for for whoever wins this game tonight. Well, I mean, you think about it in the sense from a Texas Tech perspective, and let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. By the way, tip-off is scheduled for 9.15. Again, tip-off is scheduled for 9.15 Central Time, according to CBS. Um, But you're right. I mean, from a Texas Tech perspective, you have to think about it in this sense. Again, the most important game is NC State. You cannot take them lightly at all. You can't, right? But the possibility of coming to Dallas now just got increased. And if you get to Dallas, you just get basically Lubbock East. And trust me, I've been there before when the Red Raiders have played in the NCAA tournament. Those might remember that watched the 2018 run where they went to the Elite Eight with Keenan Evans. That started in Dallas. That could potentially happen again, but it would be the second weekend. And how big would that be? And again, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, right? In the sense of you need to focus on NC State. You have to win this game tonight, and then you very much have to take whoever goes forward, NC State or Texas Tech, very seriously, Oakland, because, well, they just beat a Kentucky team. Do they shoot 48.4% from three again? Probably not. But we've seen crazier things in March, man. Um, and a perfect example is that right there. Um I, I I mean, Matt Norlander just said this on here, and it, I think it's a great point. That that might be Coach Cal's last game at Kentucky. I, I think they might be done. Um, I think that that might just be a thing where, hey, we reached our ceiling. No hard feelings to either of you. Let's just move on um, kind of deal. But that's not why y'all are here. Y'all are here to know what's going on elsewhere um, around – the madness currently only two games going on and well, one of them's an absolute freaking blowout by Gonzaga. Um, sorry for talking shit, Gonzaga, my bad. Um, 83 61. They're going to win that with a minute left. And then Tennessee, St. Peter's, the Vols lead the Peacocks by now 10. Um, again, Texas tech and NC state will tip off at nine 15. Let's transition back here, um, Austin, in terms of, well, what we're doing from this standpoint. And again, if y'all haven't gone to the Scarlet and Black Insider, be sure to do so. Let's see we got in the comments section real quick. We've got uh, start with Jay. Okay, thanks. I just subscribed a few weeks ago. Um, that was in response to you there, Austin, in the Hub City Hoop Stock. And if you haven't described it, subscribe to that. Go subscribe there. Austin and Jacob talk well. I think you can guess from the title, oops, um, about Texas Tech. Um, let's see. What conference is Oakland in? They are in the Horizon League. Um, this from Katie. Kentucky is Aggies failures. Okay. I, it's so funny to me, like, the, from a philosophical standpoint, how much the portal has just – completely flipped college basketball on its head like there is still such thing as blue bloods don't get me wrong but the gap between a blue blood and everybody else is smaller than ever and it will continue to be smaller and smaller with the portal and nil i mean a perfect example is smu their coach literally won 10 games his first season there and then last year this past season won 20 and what does smu say that's not good enough and they fired him Now they're going to go big game hunting. I mean, it's just crazy how the game is changing right now. Um, Yeah, now now I think uh, I think in I'm thinking Austin's on that drink right now, right? Correct. A little bit of whiskey. A little bit of a little bit of whiskey going on. A little bit of game drink. We're we're 21 and older on this show. We are, yeah. Um, No, you are right though, RC. I mean, it's it is pretty crazy. There's such an interesting dynamic. You have. NIL agents, you have collectives, you have no real, you know, parameters or guidelines in in terms of how to operate. Um, So it's the Wild West. Um, It really does create kind of an equal playing field in some cases. I think that 
the reality is, you know, if you didn't track college basketball closely before the NIL era, um, these things were happening before, but it was really just the blue bloods that were kind of doing it. Um, Kentucky, a prime example. Um, but, you know, it, it's leveled the playing field. Not all of the SMUs, you know, not everyone's an SMU of the world that has that kind of money. Um, but it has even the playing field. You know, Texas Tech is set up very well in that department. The Matador Club's done a fantastic job. Definitely want to give them a little bit of a plug. Um, no official partnership there or anything with us, but man, they are they really do things the right way over there. Um, and it, it is tremendously helping Texas Tech Athletics. So if you haven't already, go over there, give them a little donation. Um, it, it definitely supports NIL for Texas Tech Transfer Portal, all the stuff that we're covering over on Scarlet and Black. Um, but man, this is uh, this is exciting, guys. Like I said, it just feels like RC that we like the ante just got up. Like wow, like whoever wins this game, I mean, there's a real chance you go to the Sweet 16 now. Yeah, no, I I I, I totally agree. And again, that's not trying to you know, diminish what Oakland just no. did. But historically, when you win that, 14s don't go on. I mean, just historically, right? But again, like um, Lawrence said, can't focus on Oakland. You've got to win tonight. You're 100% right. And we'll break down a little bit more here about Texas Tech and NC State. If you haven't already, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like the video if you're watching on Twitter. And I know about 1,400 of y'all are right now. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I, I told Austin again, I said this a little bit earlier. We've been live for about 45 minutes now. I don't know how long we're going to be live for. I told my wife probably about five and a half hours. Um, so she'll hate me for that in the morning, I'm sure. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, that's part of the business. But like the video over on YouTube, retweet it on Twitter. Let's get as many Red Raider fans in here as possible and have just an absolute blast tonight covering this team in the Grant McCaslin era for the first time in the NCAA tournament in his tenure. Lots to discuss. I'm, I don't know about you, and maybe this is the easy way out in terms of asking you who on the Red Raiders you're most excited to watch tonight, um, Austin. I'll, I'll start. I'll, I'll, I'll take, I'll, I'll, I'll take the, you know, the, the Olive Garden breadstick, per se, <laughs> um, in this one. It's Pop Isaacs. And the reason being is this. Pop Isaacs when the lights are brighter, he becomes a better player. And he has proven it time and time again. He loves these big moments. And it's his first time in the NCAA tournament. Everybody knows what happened last year in the sense of just the disaster that was Texas Tech men's basketball. They're back on track. Pop stuck around. Pop was a guy that nearly averaged 17 points in the toughest conference in America. Um, Albeit roller coaster. Let's be real. We'll be honest about it. He was fantastic when conference play started. Was pretty damn bad in the middle. But over the past seven games, he's been an all Big 12 first team caliber play um, and back on track. And I, I truly believe he is in for one of those um, just nights we talk about for a long time in the sense of shooting from deep, playmaking. Um, getting his teammates involved. There's not very many guys like Pop Isaacs in college basketball that rise to the occasion. And I, I, I think he's going to do so in a major way for the Red Raiders tonight um, on national television, on CBS. This isn't on True TV where they're playing, you know, every other month of the year, the Seven Little Jacksons or whatever that show is that they're promoting. Um, or the impractical hey, jokers. RC, they just put up a graphic of Darian Williams on the on the broadcast, and it's a picture of Sardar Calhoun. Remember Sardar Calhoun from yeah. last year? What in the hell is going on? <laughs> I'm not even I'm watching the, the wraparound one. I probably need to turn that one back that on. That just blew my mind. I was just like, what am I watching? What am I looking at right now? Um, yeah, that's that's that not was, good. That was uh, but really who, weird. who are you most forward to? Uh, or, well, who do you think has a big night, or yeah. who are you most excited to watch? I mean, they kind of just, you know, it's not definitely not Sardar Calhoun, but uh, you know, it was supposed to be a picture of Darian Williams. I'm excited to see Darian Williams. I, I really, when I look at their their lineup, RC, I don't know who guards, you know, Darian Williams because you, you you can't really put DJ Burns on him. I don't know if he's quick enough. It's, when it's when... got to be Diaria. It's, it's got to be, be Diaria, but it's like, you know, I, I know Diaria is versatile for his length, um, but 
does he create some mismatches with his kind of with his speed and and kind of just him off the dribble, his shooting ability? Um, he pulls him out to the outside. You know, he, he's so good driving to the basket and making those contested kind of layups and and, and just runners, I guess you could call them. But I'm, I want to see Darian Williams tonight. I love your answer about Pop. I think he's been waiting for this moment his whole life. Um, he, Sir Derek Calhoun, back on the uh, Texas Tech for the tournament. David says in the chat, I, uh, as RC said, I sure hope not. Um, I, I did love Sardar Calhoun. I think he ended up going to Drake. I don't know if he played this year or not. Um, but Darian Williams for me, RC, I love your answer with pop. Also, let me give a little bit of, a little bit of a shout out to, uh, Joe Tucson. You know, I mean, he's, this is his final year. Same with Warren Washington. Um, I want to see Joe Tucson, uh, Tucson go out with a bang. I want to see him put up a calm, collected performance. Don't do too much. Just, just you know, play ball tonight. Um, play good defense. Try to lock down DJ Horn, um, and let's see what happens. I think that's going to be the most fascinating matchup of the night. Is um, I'm giving DJ Horn um, like the treatment of basically what we just saw from Oakland in the sense of what Kentucky was doing. I'm not letting that man breathe. Okay. So I am legitimately, um, yeah, I, 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 I can't get over this in terms of <laughs> how, do you, you're a billion dying, dollar dude. how do you mess this up? I'm dying. Like, like who, how did they find a picture of a player from last year's team? And he left in the middle of the year, didn't he? Like he wasn't even really on the roster. Like it, that is bizarre to me, but hey, maybe, I don't know. Maybe that's a good omen somehow. I, I have no clue. I'm just going to take it as that, RC. I, uh, I, that's all you can do. Um, that is so funny. I, I, it literally, uh, I had to interrupt you as soon as I saw that. I was like, what the hell is on my, my screen right now? I'm yeah, no. At- um, <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's always funny to me. And, and let, let, let me say, it's like a content creator. I fuck up all the time. I really do. It's just part of the business, but it's funny to me when you have a billion dollar corporation with like no joke, probably about eight to nine people fact checking everything. And that still goes on air. It, it's just, it's mind boggling. But anyway, um, I, I do think Joe is super fascinating um, in the sense that, uh, you know, what do you do with him and DJ Horn? And Austin's going to step away real quick to grab his computer charger. Um, but I do think that when you look at it from a Joe perspective, right, I think that the most interesting thing for Texas Tech is how he's utilized tonight from the standpoint of DJ Horn. So I really like Austin bringing that up because I think Joe is obviously going to be vastly important in the pick and roll offensively. But I think this is a game where Joe Toussaint really flashes his talents defensively as long as he's not overly aggressive. Okay, that's the main thing here is because we've seen it at times. Joe likes to, you know, a little try too much sometimes. Let's just say it that way. Um, but I do think he is the best defender at the guard position that the Red Raiders have. So I would not be shocked if you just see him basically stuck to DJ Horn tonight and wouldn't blame it at all. But I also could see it where they throw Chance McMillan at him in the sense of that athleticism. Not very many guys in college basketball are as athletic at the guard position as Chance McMillan. Okay, so y- you have some options. Um, yeah, I-, I mean, if you're Texas Tech, um, in the sense of trying to contain um, one of the better players they're probably going to play all year one more time while austin gets back here in just a second like the video if you haven't already over on youtube we've got about oh 100 people watching over there and then we've got well over 1500 watching on twitter so be sure to go over there if you're on twitter retweet the video let's get as many red raiders as possible in here to enjoy the fun tonight and while you're at it you might as well like the tweet as well let's see what we got in the comment section We've got, uh, yeah, we've got a, what the fuck was that graphic? Yeah, that's more than fair. Is Sadar Calhoun back on Texas Tech for the tournament? Graphic gate. 
Pack at the free throw line as long as it's not incompetent Big 12 crew. Well, you don't have to worry about that. Jay says that's a kind of disrespectful graphic. David says CBS hasn't even tipped the tech game and already disrespecting tech with Sadar Calhoun. Yeah, not great. Um, one game at a time with that said, Elite Eight is ours if we play Red Raider basketball. Um, also, CBS analysts picking NC State. Um F them and their ACC fanboy minds, guns up, and let's win this mofo. Um, there you go um, on that. And then, and then Mike in here saying, my bracket is lit up with a like a Christmas tree, red and green. Um, glad y'all caught the Darion Williams picture. I was confused with what I was seeing. Yeah, you probably weren't the only one. Um, you know who was probably the most confused if he was watching it was Sadar Calhoun. It's like, what the fuck? When did that happen? <laughs> um, also, I bet he wishes he had those kind of numbers at Texas Tech because he never would have transferred. Um, so there you go. But super interesting on that front. Again, another another mess up on that front um, by CBS. Right now, again, tip-off is scheduled for just about 15 minutes away. Austin, let's talk a little bit more about this game um, yep. from the standpoint. Again, for those that don't know that are just getting in here, Darion Williams is back. He is in the starting lineup. Um, that has been confirmed by Texas Tech in that regard. So you have that if you're the Red Raiders, which is obviously, obviously big for Texas Tech. Now, do you have Warren Washington back? That's going to be the bigger tell here in just a little bit. He's not starting for the Red Raiders, but... Um, there is a lot of chatter that he will, in fact, be back for Texas Tech tonight. Um, but, Austin, what could, what do you think we can expect from those guys? I know we talked about it a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. We've been live for an hour. Um, for those yeah. that have been with us the whole time, appreciate y'all. Over 2,000 tuning in right now um, across YouTube as well as Twitter. But what do you think we can expect potentially? Let's start with Darion, the for sure, right? Like in the sense of he is back. Um, what do you think we can expect from him tonight against NC State? Yeah, um, you know, I, I don't think the Darian injury was as serious as maybe people expected. Um, you know, he had a boot on uh, for the watch party for the uh, bracket reveal. That was, you know, precautionary at best, I would say. I think he's going to give it his best tonight. The one thing you worry about with an ankle, RC, and, you know, for those of you that have played sports or played basketball in particular, <clears throat> sorry about that. Um, you're making a lot of cuts, you're jumping. There's a lot of weird angles that you make with, you know, kind of like, you know, breaking off the floor and things like that. I just worry about him potentially re-spraining it. That's like my biggest fear. Um, but as long as everything goes smoothly, uh, I, I foresee him having a, a pretty typical game. And again, I really am fascinated to watch that matchup because it's like, it goes both ways, RC, in my opinion. You have Darian Williams, who I think can really exploit NC State offensively. But then on the defensive end, <clears throat> I worry about Darian getting into foul trouble, right? So you put Rob, you probably want to put Rob on Burns. I don't think Burns draws a ton of fouls, actually, which may surprise some people. So maybe you do stick Darian on Burns. But that's something to keep an eye on for Texas Tech fans, foul trouble. Um, especially for Rob Jennings. He's really, he's got to not get those reach in fouls, those silly fouls tonight. They are going to need a good 20 minutes out of him tonight. You always have Yalaho who's been playing well. Um, but in terms of the injury, I really do think Darian is going to pretty much perform like he has all season. Based on everything we've heard, I, I don't think he's been like, you know, walking on it awkwardly or, or kind of limping or any showing any signs of it still showing, uh, you know, being hurt. Um, so that's how I feel about Darian tonight. Hopefully that stays true. Yeah, and we just got confirmation from Texas Tech basketball, the official Twitter count there with the starting five. You got Joe Toussaint, Pop Isaacs, Darion Williams in his return after missing the Houston game in the Big 12 tournament with Kerwin Walton and Robert Jennings at the five. We do not know if Warren Washington will play tonight, but I do think there's a really good chance that he does. Um, let's talk about it in sense of, let's say he does play. I've kind of given my thoughts already from the standpoint of, I think he plays 10 to 15 minutes, um, that kind of deal. And um, by the way, multiple reports here, I want to give credit um, to who has it. 
there's been countless videos coming out right now. And Nathan Geis for the Lubbock Avalanche Journal, who's done a phenomenal job at covering Texas Tech this season, he just posted a video. Warren Washington is in uniform and out for warm-ups for Texas Tech. So it sounds like he is going to at least give it a go in some capacity um, for Texas Tech tonight, which is obviously huge for the Red Raiders. I saw I talked about a little bit earlier, um, Austin, where I truly think it's going to be 10 to 15 minutes for him, and you're going to see Grant McCaslin and crew really pick and choose when they want to use him from the standpoint of, let's just say hypothetically where – you talked about Robert Jennings trying to stay out of foul trouble. Let's say he gets a quick two in the first, I don't know, six minutes. Calm, calm the ship a little bit, right, in terms of just calm it down. Put him in there for a couple minutes before the next media timeout. Calm it down, and you're good to go, and then pick and choose in the second half when you need him. I would be really shocked, personally, if he plays more than 15 minutes. That That's me. I don't know about you, Austin, but personally, I think he's going to be in that 10 to 15 minute range. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with you. Um, I, again, I, I don't hate his role coming off the bench actually, because I think you're going to get into foul trouble trying to guard DJ Burns tonight. I, I think that's just going to be inevitable. I, a lot of times in the NCAA tournament, you see reps calling, hopefully that's not the case, but calling ticky tacky fouls, kind of touch fouls in the paint, things like that. Um, so if Rob does get into foul trouble, at least you got Warren coming off the bench kind of as a, a longer, um, you know, rim protector off that that second unit. Um, so I don't hate it because you have Chance coming off the bench. You have Warren coming off the bench. It's like, oh, my gosh, all of a sudden, you know, you have two guys that probably, you know, obviously Warren started for all of the season um, and Chance could easily be in the starting rotation. He's been a, a key contributor all year. Um, so I don't hate it, RC. I think it could actually play into Texas Tech's hand. Um, the one thing that when you really – drill down into NC State. Again, I said this earlier, um, we have some more viewers now. They have a, a, a seven-man rotation primarily. Um, they have a, a guy named Ben Middlebrooks who comes off the bench. He's kind of, he's really their only big man that they take off the bench, guys. Um, and he averaged about five points a game this year. He can actually shoot the three a little bit. Um, he, he's probably like their, their one stretch kind of forward that they have. Um, but very short rotation RC. So that's something to keep in mind. I mean, if Burns goes into foul trouble, that's a huge development for them. So if I'm Texas tech, I'm trying to, I'm driving at DJ Burns tonight. And that's my goal. I know that sounds crazy. Try to get him into foul trouble. If he picks up too early in the first half, significant advantage, put Tucson on DJ Horn. Um, but yes, very, uh, you know, you could call it a, a, a shallow rotation, I guess, for NC state, not particularly long, um, so let's see what happens. I don't hate Warren Washington coming off the bench. Yeah, I, I, I really don't either. I think it's the smart play, not only right now for Texas tech, but also the future of Warren Washington, because you got to think past this game too. Like yeah. in terms of just this tournament, he has a pro future, whether that's NBA G league, maybe overseas, whatever it is for him. You want to make sure that he's good. Um, I think for me, the most interesting thing tonight from the standpoint of what I want to see Texas Tech do, and I'm curious to see how much they use the lineup because I've been preaching about it since, man, the K-State game. I mean, we're talking about third game of the Big 12. Um, I want to see how often they use the small ball lineup. I really do. And, and that's not indicative of how I feel about Robert Jennings or Ameli Yalahu or even Warren Washington. It's just I think that that lineup offensively is worth more than what it does for you defensively because that lineup for Texas Tech, and for those that don't know the lineup I'm talking about, Pop, Joe, Kerwin, Chance, Darion at the five. That lineup, what are you going to do if you're NC State and you want to have a big on the floor? Nothing. You're going to do nothing. Now, offensively, you send double teams at them, right? You're gonna, but you're going to do that anyway. For Burns, even if RJ's on the floor. So why not get as much shooting and spacing as possible if you're Texas Tech and the capability to where whoever gets the rebound can start the fast break? Why not have that? Because I think NC State, they proved it in the ACC tournament that maybe it was a fluke during the season, but during the season they were, let me think my word here, lackluster. I think that that's a fair word. 
um, when it comes to transition defense. And so I think that's a place where Texas Tech can capitalize, if you ask me. Let's get to the chat real quick. Again, we're about, oh, five minutes away from tip-off where your Texas Tech Red Raiders will face off against the NC State Wolfpack for a chance to face Kentucky. Psych. <laughs> gotcha. Pay attention to your bracket, people, to play the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. How about that? This is March, baby. We sleep in May. Shout out to John Rothstein for that. That's the only quote I like by him. That one and also January, February, Izzo. Because if you didn't bet on Michigan State in the first round, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? It's easy. It's free money. Sorry. It feels like a personal attack, RC. I had uh, Mississippi State advancing, so. Not everybody's uh, as smart as they're cracked up. <laughs> All right, let's get here. Oh, my uncle's watching. Shout out to Max Concert Photography. Then we've got uh, Julie watching as well. Cooking healthy with Julie. Appreciate y'all tuning in back there in the crooked eye. If you know, you know. Uh, Vizi says, if the ACC implodes, we might be in the Big 12 with you guys soon. I think that that would probably be the case, and I think you would be joining with the likes of that blue team in the same state as you. No, not the Carolina blue. I think Duke would join the Big 12, but that's for another video and a conversation entirely. Jay says, this is great. Appreciate you tuning in, Jay. Alex asks, thoughts on Marquette in a potential Sweet 16 game? Does playing Shaka Smart give us an advantage? I don't know. I think Marquette's really fucking good. They're really fucking good. Um, but, again, I think you got to focus on NC State more than anybody. Um, Max says he's not in the starting lineup. That's in reference to Warren Washington. Appreciate you letting us know there. Max T. Ferg says, Reckham Tech, let's go. Great game. But honestly, Tech will be dominant, no doubt. VZ says, also, Burns gets into foul trouble too if the Zebras are quick on the whistle. If not, watch out because you can't keep him from backing you down. It's fair. Dude's a fucking tank. Um, let's see. Alex says, Texas Tech is playing on CBS, right? The main station. Yes, that is correct. Austin lets you know already. But this is what you should do. We're, we're moments away from tip-off. I'm going to let you guys into exactly what you should do right now. Okay? Put the game on your big TV in front of you. I know you have a phone. It's 2024. I know it's a smartphone. Open up YouTube. Open up Twitter. And watch and hang out with us there so you can be interactive in the comments. We'll be having play-by-play. -play. We're about to have the scoreboard up here in just a second. They're going through last minute, you know, things in terms of the pregame. We got Raider Red tipping his cap, pointing over at the Wolfpack, saying we're about to beat your ass. At least that's what I imagine Raider Red to say. I'm not saying that's what he actually said, but it might be. I don't know. We can't confirm or deny it. You know what I mean, Austin? So it's one of those things. Um, but. That's what you should do. And while you're at it, before we get too far again, like the video, hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're on Twitter, retweet and like the post. Let's get as many Red Raiders in here as possible. We're about to hit 2,500 Red Raiders in here right now in a couple of, uh, let's call them nice. We got Vezzi in here. He's a good guy. We got a couple of nice Wolfpack fans in here hanging out with us as well. So we appreciate that, y'all. You know, tuning in, hanging out with us. I'll be doing the play-by-play. -play. Austin will be doing the live commentary, helping with the chat and keeping us up to date on everything else that's going on around March Madness because this game is, well, yeah, it's late tip-off and everything, but there's a few other games going on um, around the tournament right now. And on the CBS website, tip-off is scheduled for 9-15. They keep moving it back. We got we to gotta stop doing this, man. Like, it's going to be past my bedtime. You know how many cappuccinos I've had today? And I don't care if you call me a bitch for drinking cappuccinos. You know how many I've had today? I'm tweaking right now. This is four. Four. Wow. Good yeah. caffeine levels. We got the we got everything ready to go for you guys. It's going to be yeah. a fun, fun game. I'm not going to lie. Doing the live stream is nice because when you're, you know, the kind of fan that I am, I'm just like, I'm super locked in. Like Lauren said in the chat, pacing in front of the TV. I'm like, man, I'm nervous. Now I'm feeling good. I'm like, hey, we got we got, you know, 2,500 people here with us. Whatever happens, you know, it happens. But I, I feel pretty good about things. I wanted to go back in really quick, RC, just to NC State. Um, a couple of quick things just to point out before the game starts. Um, I, I mentioned this earlier. Last 10 games for NC State for Bart Torbic, uh, 17th best offense in the country. Um, but the defense uh, outside of the uh, 125 in adjusted defense. So Defense is a little bit shaky. Uh, I think that that's where Texas Tech can really take advantage of them. 
So my key to the game, RC, um, I, I know you mentioned three-point percentage. I think that's going to be huge tonight. Texas Tech has a clear advantage in the three-point department. NC State only has two players in their core rotation that shoot it over 36% from three. DJ Horn is really the one guy you cannot let shoot from three tonight. You have to have a hand in his face. It's going to be, you know, I guess easier said than done. Um, but also you have Jaden Taylor who comes off the bench. He is a 36, uh, 36.5, 37% uh, three-point shooter. So got to keep a hand in those two face. Uh, and then you're looking at an NC State team who just won five games in five days, guys. They beat Louisville, Syracuse, Duke, Virginia, UNC. Um, so my key to the game, RC, is to be, be the better defensive team tonight um, and lock down DJ Burns. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Um, in, in the sense of, obviously, the DJs are going to be the top priority. Um for Texas Tech, obviously, Horn and Burns. And we are moments away from tip-off. Teams are in the huddle. Texas Tech will be in the white. And we have NC State in there. I'm not going to lie to you. This might be the nicest thing about I say about NC State all night. I really like their red jerseys. They're really clean. Like, I, I hope that's the kind of Adidas stuff that Texas Tech gets. Like the that, That's the through. kind of stuff. Shoe um, game is looking good. Yeah, let's give a couple shout outs before we get going here. We got Cactus. Did the commentators say Pop isn't a good shooter? I have no idea. I have it on mute and I'm listening to us. No shade at you. Lauren, um, already pacing in front of my TV. We got the great Lyle Leong Jr., one of the greatest wide receivers in Texas Tech history, tuning in. All love, brother, and my co host over on the Back to 12 podcast, I might add. We'll be talking about wide receivers here pretty soon, and you're not going to want to miss that. David says, RC has the coffee habits of Dan Campbell. You're damn fucking right. Uh, the nation says Raider, and we've got Laura answering with power. Let's see the starting lineups for this one. We've got O'Connell. We've got Horn, just like we mentioned earlier. We've got Marcel, Diaria, and then Burns for the Red Raiders. It is Pop Isaacs, Joe Tucson, Darion Williams, Robert Jennings, and Kerwin Walton. Let's get the chat going. Come on. I need, I, I, I need, here we go. Raider. Come on. Let me see those powers in the chat right now. Texas Spam Tech. Raider power. Let's get it. Come on. Let's go. Let's get the Got chat. Yara going. on the tip off against Robert Jennings. Here we go. This should be a fun one. This is the game you've been waiting a long, long time for, Texas Tech fans. All right. And here we go. We're switching the bracket. We're switching the screen and everything for you guys. Here's the live interactive scoreboard right now. Texas Tech loses the tip off NC State. Top right key down to Burns on Robert Jennings. Power dribble. Back down out. Back to Burns. This was something we talked about earlier. Burns goes in with his left up. And we got Darion Williams tipping it to Pop Isaacs in those just sour pat shoes coming down the court. Darion Williams at the top left key, trying to get the ball to Pop Isaacs over on the right side. Goes to Robert Jennings in the pick and roll. Goes left. Top of the key jumper. Off to the right with Burns getting the rebound for NC State. Horn moves forward. Goes from left to right. Stops and pops at the top of the three-point line. And it will be a rebound for Joe Tucson, who initiates the fast break for the Red Raiders. To his left goes Joe. Stop. Pop. Shot. Good. Great shot. Red Raiders Joe. lead it 2-0 on a... Really, really saucy Joe Toussaint shot right there. NC State tries to go down there to Burns once again. No help quite yet. Burns gets inside, up. And they're going to say that's a block. Great job by RJ staying up. Joe Toussaint on the left side of the floor here using the screen from RJ. Finds Pop Isaacs, hesitates, goes in, up, floater, good. Red Raiders lead it 4 nothing early on. Really aggressive. That was one thing we talked about in this one, Austin. We had to see Texas Tech be aggressive. So far, so good. And we know what guards do in March. A missed three, but they're going to call a foul on Kerwin, who did, uh, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm being honest. A really bad job of boxing out. Austin. It's like a wide receiver blocking yeah, on the yeah, left yeah. side. Trying to win off the line of scrimmage and just shoved him out of the way. I think it's pretty clear. I mean, they're 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 dropping it down to D. Oh, my. That's a charge. I mean, okay. I guess. Looked like a charge to me. Burns backing down. Yeah. Wow. 
No, he's inside the restricted area, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. I don't know. His feet were inside. That was close. Yeah. Give it a I, watch. I, I think he, here's the thing. I, I think if you're calling that, Burns is not playing basketball tonight, which I guess if you're a Texas Tech fan, that's probably a good thing. Um, that's but one yeah, yeah, beginnings, yeah. though. Like we like we talked about RC. Keep an eye on that. But they're they're force feeding they're force feeding DJ, and I'm fine. That's yep. That's a charge. There we go. There we go. That's one on Burns. I'm ahead there of you. you go. Early foul trouble for Burns would be huge for Texas Tech, and you could. That's a great play by RJ. I'm telling you, I was critical of RJ early on in the year, right? But his physicality level has just gone up a notch really the last seven games he has been sensational for texas tech in warren washington's absence that's huge though that is big for texas tech an early i would say abbreviated press by north carolina state texas tech bringing it up the floor four nothing lead for the red raiders they go well, wanted to go left, but Pop Isaacs retrieves the ball in the top right arc down to Robert Jennings, loses the ball, turnover, NC State, moving down the middle of the floor. Top of the key, goes left off the Burns pick. You can definitely tell Horn is trying to get this ball, and they're trying to make it a concentrated effort, but now you got the matchup of Joe Tucson and Horn. Horn at the top right. Really good defense for the Red Raiders mm. in the first 20 seconds. Pop Isaacs on the ball handler right now at the left elbow. Down to Burns. RJ up, over, shot. Bad shot right there, but great play by Diaria in the and one. That's what you Erwin worry about, Watson right? Once again, got caught underneath. Yeah. You will be seeing Chance McMillan here in just a second if you are the Red Raiders. Burns is also checking out. Um, yeah, that's what you worry about, right? I mean, Diara is six foot ten. He's got a long wingspan. Um, Darian kind of got pinned underneath the basket. Kerwin couldn't do anything. Warren Washington not checking in. It will be Chance McMillan, but it does look like Warren Washington will give it a go. 4-3. Diaria capitalizes on the and one opportunity as NC State pressures the ball abbreviated or soft full court press. Darion goes left at the top, goes towards the basket, up, over, and it will uh, be blocked by Diaria, who is one of the best shot blockers in the ACC, but it will remain Red Raider basketball with 17.03 remaining. You can see the stats on the screen right there, and bang, wow. bang, Joe Tucson. Off the out-of-bounds play, it goes to pop. They feed it around to Joe off the catch and shoot from the left arc, but it, he misses that one. That's the key. Chance McMillan gets the offensive rebound. Darion Williams back to Joe. He doesn't hesitate. He makes it at the top of the key, but then NC State responds with a two of their own right away on the other end. This feels like it's going to be a back and forth game, though, right, Austin? Like it feels like yeah. first one to 75 kind of wins this. I think so. And I think it was interesting to see, you know, NC State's game plan coming right out of the gate was to just force feed DJ Burns. I don't think that that's, I don't know. I, I just, I don't see that being a winning strategy for them tonight. Um, I think they have to have more action. Kind of like they just scored that last basket. Chance McMillan off the rim there. Also, RC, where are you at on the time right now? 16. I ain't gonna lie. I'm a little delayed here, but okay. we're keeping it up. Chance McMillan three there in the corner. NC State recovers. They go down, and there is going to be a shooting foul on Darion Williams, and that will send us to the first media timeout at the 1552 mark. Texas Tech leads. Let's get to the comments real quick to see what everybody's doing. We've got a lot of powers in there. We love to see that. Um, Mr. Jeff said, I stupidly had Kentucky in the Elite Eight. Well, it happens, Jeff. Um, Kobe says, power. Renee says, completely unnecessary. I'm assuming he's talking about the Burns play initially to RJ, and then RJ gets the charge call there. Um, really interested to see kind of, is this the time Warren comes in? I could see this being it. out of a timeout. You got Darion with a foul there. Excuse me. RJ's got one as well. Burns not in the game currently. He could come in after this, obviously, but. Does he potentially come into the game right here? One more time before we get into this, like the video if you're watching on YouTube. I know over 150 people are watching over there, so like the video if you haven't already. 
then be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you're watching on Twitter, at the next media timeout, Austin, remind me, at the next media timeout, I'll be sure to give some shout outs for everybody that retweets and likes the tweet for this video on Twitter. Currently, we are at 2,700 people watching. The goal for this in terms of both Twitter and YouTube tonight is to get to 20,000 combined views. I think we can do it. We just need to get as many Red Raiders in here as possible. Easiest way to do that on YouTube, like the video and then share it if you want to YouTube, Twitter, whatever it is, and then retweet if you're on Twitter and like the video as well. It goes a long way in terms of helping us. What stood out to you early on outside of Burn getting those early touches, Austin? Yeah, I mean, Joe Toussaint seems pretty locked in. Um, you love to see that. I mean, if Joe, this this team is a completely different team when Joe Toussaint is really kind of in his bag, I guess to say. Um, but when that when that three point shot is falling, especially for him, you got look out because um, he's really the lower end three point shooter on the team. Um, Chance McMillan, Kerwin, Pop, all three guys that can just absolutely light it up from deep. Super impressed from Tucson early. Um, I also think that, you know, it, it was interesting, like I said earlier, to see kind of them force feed DJ Burns. Maybe that's an interesting strategy for McCaslin. Hey, if, if he's going to body you up like that and put an elbow out, let try to get the charge call, right? Um, I mean, so we'll see what happens with that. Burns has an early foul. Jennings has an early foul. I think you said Darian. Also, uh, Dylan in the chat says he thinks Darian tweaked that ankle again. I yeah, didn't actually. Did you see that, RC? I, I didn't I, catch that. I didn't see it at the very end there. Um, but Warren Washington, after missing seven games, 27 days between games where he played in Orlando, Florida, will now be back on the floor for your Texas Tech Red Raiders. Warren Washington is now back in the game after this first media timeout. To what capacity will he play tonight? We shall see. But he is now in the game for Texas Tech. Joe Toussaint leads the way early with five points for the Red Raiders. Now, when it comes to free throws, let's see what happens here. Morsell at the line, and he misses the first one. You'll take that every day of the week when it comes down to it in terms of free throws missed. Darian Williams with the early bloody nose, RC. Who? Uh, Darian Williams has a little uh, cotton swab in his nose, little little early game bloody nose. So, Hey, it worked for Creighton earlier today. They had it. Hey, it's now, March Madness. You got to have at least one bloody nose, right? Yeah, it, it's, it's the stipulation and the rules of, you know, what's going on and everything like that. He makes the second one. 7-6 Texas Tech, just under 16 minutes remaining. Warren Washington back on the floor for the Red Raiders. Pop Isaac shoots the three, misses, rebounded by NC State. I'm really interested to see how they guard Pop tonight and if he forces things or anything like that because it really is truly going to be one of those deals where I think Texas Tech um, – has a really, really good chance to isolate him and get him into space. Um, that was a really good shot by him. Created his own space, just didn't make it. NC State gets the rebound. Darion gets the rebound off the NC State missed, and there is a foul by Middlebrooks, a shooting foul, Pop Isaacs, to the free throw line where he makes the first one. Just want to point out, too, um, Warren Washington with some pretty good bounce off that last uh, yes. kind of block attempt on defense. Yeah, he... You, you can tell that the foot probably isn't 100%, but it's much closer to 100% than it was against UCF. And that, that's big. And Pop Isaacs makes the second free throws, goes two for two at the line. Red Raiders lead nine to six. Again, if you're just joining us before this game in Pittsburgh, the upset of the tournament so far, down goes number three, Kentucky, in the South region to Oakland, the 14th seed. And there he rears his ugly head. DJ Horn for three to tie it up at nine. We we told y'all before this happened, um, hey, like this is uh this is gonna be one of those deals, man, where um it's gonna be a shootout potentially with some of these guys. Now, mostly it's on the DJ Horn side for NC State because he can just absolutely shoot it from deep. Joe Toussaint with another three-point attempt misses this one. Diaria gets the rebound for the Wolfpack. 
Texas Tech one for five from three so far to begin this one. The lone three-pointer made from Joe Toussaint, who actually just missed it. And there goes that man again. Uh-oh. Yep. You can't have him heat up. You can't have DJ Horn heat up. That is a recipe for disaster Ooh. for the Red Raiders. Quick two three-pointers NBA for DJ range. Horn. Yeah. NBA range for that one. Yep, and DJ Horn gives the Wolfpack the three-point lead. I'm telling you, he, he there, there's two guys. you got to know where they're at at all times. One is very hard to miss, um, but the other one is DJ Horn. That guy's a certified pro. Texas Tech misses their shot. DJ Horn gets the rebound. O'Connell for NC State up with the shot. Miss rebounded by Darion, and there he is. Warren Washington back in action with a dunk. There we go. For the Red Raiders. That's Warren's first bucket since, what, the UCF game? I mean, it's been a, almost a month, I believe. Did he score believe. that game? I don't even know if he did. Maybe he didn't, actually. I don't yeah. know. He only played I, I'm not trying minutes. to question you or anything. I just no, I, you I, maybe, I don't remember. No, I don't either. I know he played only like 13 minutes that game, so maybe he didn't score. But, man, he looks good, guys. Like, wow. No, he, he, they, remember, he's got to knock off the rust. Don't get too excited now or anything. Um but, yeah, you can definitely tell he looks a lot fresher and a lot more nimble than he did in the sense of playing the Knights down there in Orlando. Um, okay. I don't know why you want to shoot that, but Warren gets the rebound. Pop Isaacs pushes it up with the Sour Patch Kids up to Joe. And Sour Patch Kids, obviously, referring to his Steph Curry Sour Patch. Pop Isaacs with the floater. Missed. Rebound O'Connell for NC State. They push it down the floor. And... Pop Isaacs with the foul. 13 minutes left. Pop Isaacs coming off the floor for Kerwin Walton. Currently, NC State leads it 12 to 11. Appreciate y'all spending some of your Thursday night with us. We'll be doing play by play and everything in between. Answering your questions in the comments. If you haven't already, retweet the video. Again, I'll give you a shout out here at the next media timeout. If you retweet the video on Twitter and then on YouTube, if you haven't already, I know there's 150 of y'all watching on there. There's not 150 likes. What's up with that? Like the video. It goes a long way in terms of helping us. It's a good shot. And there's Middlebrooks. Middle he there. makes a shot. And then Chance yeah. McMillan with a quick layup for the Red Raiders, assisted by Darion Williams. It is 14-13. Wolfpack with just over 12 minutes remaining. Interesting, RC. DJ Burns hasn't been in since what the 17 minute mark. I don't know mm -hmm. if they're trying to protect him with the foul, you know, the one foul, but um, something to keep an eye on. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, and stop also, letting that, DJ that, Horn shoot. <laughs> Face guard the guy. That saw that 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 pass by Darion Williams was legitimately saucy. Um, so saucy. Turnover NC State. Joe Tucson up for three, misses it, but rebound Warren Washington. Love to see that. 11.47 at the time of that rebound for Warren Washington. As you can see on your screen, Texas Tech shooting an abysmal 14.3% from three. Not ideal for Texas Tech in that regard. And then Kerwin Walton, and one of the few times that he takes a two-pointer, misses. And now, oh man, that's, mm. that's not ideal for Warren right there. Warren picks up a quick foul. Um on Ben Middlebrooks. There we go. And that will send us to a TV timeout, which means I will head on over to Twitter. Again, if you were on YouTube, like the video. Let's get as many Red Raiders in here as possible. We've got this. Come on. We've got just at 3,000. We just hit 3,000 right now. That's what we love to see. 3,000 active listeners. We love to see that. All right. Let's see who has uh, retweeted this thing. Um. If it would load for me. And I'll even give the shout outs to the likes as well. Computer's going a little slow. I apologize. We got suns up, guns up in here. Um, let's see who else we've got during this media timeout. Um, we've got Brandon. Uh, Melville, appreciate you. We've got Ethan. We've got JLH. We've got Christopher, TJ. A few others in here in the like department. We've got... Uh, Dennis, Cody, Mark, Brandon, Gilbert, Vinny, Matthew, Leslie, Christopher, Jason, and a few others. Again, 
there's 3,000 of y'all in here. I don't know why we don't have more retweets or anything like that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? Just saying, Austin. Just, just saying. Also, not, wrong, guys. not ideal. Texas Tech with six fouls, eight minutes into the game. Not, 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 not ideal at all. Not um, ideal. I, I think that we're getting a little bit shot heavy as well. Um, this isn't a super physical team, in my opinion, in NC State. I think we have to start attacking more, get downhill. Um, it starts with Pop, right? I, and starts with Joe, too. Um, I think I don't have the stats pulled up, but I think Joe's already taken three or four three point attempts. That's way too much right now, guys. It's yeah. way too much. Um, relax a little bit. I think the team's a little bit excited. It's understandable. Um, it's the NCAA tournament. Settle down a little bit. Um, also, Middlebrooks feasting a little bit. Um, I don't, this is a guy that averaged five points a game this year. I don't really know how this continues, but he, he's feasting inside. Um, so we'll have to see what happens there um, and see if they bring Burns back in. Yeah, here's the box score right now. Joe, one of four from three. Yeah, just I don't too know many. why he has that many opportunities, but it is what it is. Um, I mean, Joe in this game, like, He's got to attack. That's going to be his best trait by yeah. far. Um, he can make a shot from three. I'm not trying to belittle him or anything, but that's not his game tonight against NC State. He has to get downhill um, as much as possible um, for Texas Tech. And now you kind of look at it again. Interesting to see Kerwin Walton come back in. Let's see if he actually stays out there after the media timeout. Already two fouls. As I mentioned, Texas Tech with six fouls early. Um you look at NC State, two. NC State, pretty damn close to the one and one and being in the free throw and penalty situation with damn near 10 minutes left. Um, that is far from ideal because they are a pretty solid free throw shooting team um, when it comes down to it. All right, let's get back to live here for you guys. And see it on your screen right there. All right, so on the floor for Texas Tech, after the timeout, Tucson, McMillan, Washington. By the way, Warren Washington's already played five minutes. So yeah, he looks healthy, RCA. He really does. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I might have been way too conservative <laughs> on my 10 to 15 minutes. And if I mean, he's already played a third of the time I was talking about, Austin, you know, so. Uh, I, I just didn't know what to expect. I mean, I, I think that the, uh, your outlook on it was correct, right? Like you always, you're always uh, conservative when it comes to a foot injury in a big man, a seven foot big man. Um, here comes Archie, by the way. He looks good, guys. He's bouncing around uh, like him old his old self, so that is an encouraging sign. Uh, but yeah, RC, just too many threes early. Obviously, they're not falling. Um, this is a good shooting team. I think it will correct itself, but we got to get more aggressive on the offensive side of the ball. Stop settling for shots. Yeah, Burns back in the game. I don't think it's a coincidence that you see Warren go out. And burns back in. I don't think that's a coincidence there. Um, I think they like the RJ matchup a little bit better than Warren um, in that regard. And let me hear in the chat. Bang! Darion Williams for three. That's what you love to see. A guy that shoots damn near 40% on the year. Gets Texas Tech back within one, 17 to 16. Absolutely love that shot from Darion in the sense of just conviction on it. He got off of the screen from RJ, didn't take it, power dribble to his right, in rhythm, with the gauze, in his nose. <laughs> you love to see it. You love to see that. Um, and that's, wow. Man, middle personal Brooks. fouls on Kerwin Walton. You will not see him for the remaining first half. He, he looks out of sorts right now, Kerwin does, to be honest. Um, he's not finding a body at all. Um, yeah, that's uh, just yeah, that's inexcusable. I mean, there wasn't really much of a foul there, but Kerwin's just I mean, what are you doing, lost. man? What he's are you lost. doing? Yeah, put a body on someone. I, I just don't understand. Warren coming back into the game, by the way. Um, that was bad, guys. That was really bad. I, I mean, that's that's Kerwin's biggest fault, right? I mean, that's why we talk about his fit for the team in general. Um, great offensive player, just not a great rebounder, not a great defender in general. This is the lineup I think has a chance too, if you're not going small that I want to see if Texas Tech can kind of go on a little bit of a run here um, with Warren at the five, and then you just surround yeah. him 
with a bunch of guys that can make plays. Let's see what happens. Your original starting lineup, RC. This is Texas yeah. Tech's starting lineup for the whole year. Or is, is Joe in? Yeah, yeah. This is uh, it. Yeah, well, Chance well, is in there Besides Kerwin. Sorry, besides Kerwin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, yep. Yeah. But you're And you're right, Nick. Nick brought it up just now. I mean, he they're getting out physical right now, but that'll help. Joe Toussaint right in the middle of the lane right there. Good shot. Pulls Texas Tech within one. It's 19-18 NC State. That's yep. what Texas Tech has to do on the pick and roll. They have to make DJ Burns slide back. He has yep. to play on his heels. If he plays on his heels, you you got him beat. He's not going to impact anything defensively. He's just not because he's got good feet, but it takes him a little bit. And I mean, rightfully so. The dude is built like a fucking tank. Um, it takes him a little bit to catch up and get under him in terms of his weight and everything. So um, Warren Washington gets the rebound here off of a DJ Burns missed shot. And Texas Tech is out in transition. A little bit ahead here. Joe Toussaint draws the foul. So you love to see that. And it was a shooting foul on NC State. Again, if you were watching on YouTube, be sure to like the video. And over on Twitter, we've got over 3,000 of y'all tuned in right now. Really appreciate y'all spending some of your Thursday night and, well, hanging out with us in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Hopefully we can do a couple more of these. I will say, Austin, I don't know if I will do one on my birthday. That's fair, RC. That's fair. Yeah. If you do, though, I'm here. I'm ready. So you just yeah, let me know. Yeah, I, I might. I might. Well, you know what? Let, let's say this. Let's say this. If we get some super chats tonight here on the channel, okay, I, I, I'll do one on my birthday. I might be – I might slur my words a little bit, but I'll do one. A couple tequila shots maybe? <laughs> no, You're a tequila guy, right? Guy, um, but – more of a vodka guy, personally. I'll, vodka, I'll drink okay. really whatever you put in front of me, to be honest. But, um, yeah. And, and by the way, guys, I'm going to say this right now. I just banned someone in the chat. Um, don't be political. Just stop it. We're here to talk about basketball. Like, just chill the fuck out. Um, so, yeah. By the way, this, uh, this CBS broadcast is about 10 seconds ahead of my YouTube TV. It kind of sucks. Um, yeah. DJ Burns with his first basket, though. Um, something and then a turnover out. for Warren. Yes, man, got he physical the hell out of Warren down low right there. I I'm telling you right now, if he doesn't want to play professional basketball, the Tennessee Titans need a defensive tackle. <laughs> Cowboys Holy need fuck. a lot, my my guy. Yeah, I'm telling you, my God, dude. Holy shit. You may need him on both sides of the the line. He could probably. He's play a big there. boy, though, man. I, I, I like your your idea of kind of getting him moving, right? There's DJ Horn with another two point layup. Yeah, he's Easton already. He's got to be close to ten points. Eight points. So Joe yeah, Toussaint, uh, though, nine points, man. He's got to keep attacking. I'm telling you, keep attacking. Yeah, this is, and Texas Tech calls a timeout. Um, that was a good play by DJ Horn. I mean, he's just so good, man. You can't even stop that. He's just he's smir smirking as he kind of. I, I mean, that's just an athletic play. I don't know. Grant, no, looks that, that, that that's so saucy. It's good. He's he's a good player, guys. This is a I mean, you go back and look at his uh, his stats from the middle of kind of conference play. I mean, this guy was putting up like 25 to 30 points a game um, for a good stretch there. Very good. You know what, RC, though? I'm not too worried about the start for Texas Tech. I, I think you've weathered the storm. They NC State looks very solid right now, I would say offensively. Um, but that three ball is going to start falling for Texas Tech. This is a really good top 40-ish three-point shooting team. They just have to take the right three-point shots, right? We've we've always said this throughout the whole year. Don't force it if you're pop. Don't force it if you're chance. Just hit that open bucket, move the ball around, um, and it'll be there for them. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't help when Joe is – he's playing good, don't get me wrong, but some yeah. of these shots are just really ill-advised from three – um, on his part during immediate, well, not technically immediate timeout. We'll have a, another timeout here in just a little bit because, well, they're about to be under eight. Um, Laura says NC State's a little cocky. We got to take them down. Yeah. I, listen, I'd be cocky too if I could play basketball like DJ Horn just did. I'm going to be honest. Um, that, that, that move was saucy. That, that move right there would have won the dunk contest and it was a layup. Okay. That's how bad the NBA dunk contest was this year. Um, <laughs> Once again, real quick, like the video, 
Hit that subscribe button on YouTube and then on Twitter. Let's get more people in here. We're about to hit 3,500. Doing a great job. Appreciate y'all interacting with us here on the chat as well. Uh, Mikey says, uh, it looks like he's 99.9% in terms of his bracket, I guess. I don't, I don't, I don't know what those numbers mean. I never was good with math. Wow. Um, that is pretty good though. Yeah. I'm, I, I don't know. I'm not very good at that. Um, nothing wrong with cocky says Renee. It's up to tech to step up and stop them. Exactly. You got every reason to be cocky if you're doing things right. You know, um, Let's see. Tom says that big guy for NC State absolutely fouled Warren Washington. Total total physical, um, initiated contact twice, same play. Listen, here's the thing. Virtually every play in every game that I've watched from DJ Burns, because of how just massive of a human being he is, anytime he touches anybody else, even if it's a legal play, it looks like a foul. Like he's just that massive of a human being. Um but I, I do agree. He probably should have at least one more foul, um, if you ask me. Other scores from around the country. Looks like Tennessee is not letting St. Peter's um, have a fun time today. It doesn't look like it's fun for them um, in that regard. Let's look around elsewhere um, in terms of what's going on. Actually, the game just coming back on. Texas Tech Men's Soccer Club, a little bit of a sloppy play and forcing some of those shots, but we're good and can sort it out quick. Yeah, remember, I mean, again, Texas Tech has done a phenomenal job in terms of really um, – how, how do I say this? They can have a slow start, but then come back in a big wave, right? That That's what they've done time and time again this year. Um, and out of timeouts, Grant McCaslin has drawn up fantastic plays, what seems like all the time. Right. So here we go. 18 18 remaining in the first half. NC State has the basketball. Um, well, it's going to be a jump ball. So there we go. Um, there you have it. I mean, Darion Williams tied up with, uh, believe, correct me if I'm wrong there, Austin. Is that Diaria? I believe it was Diaria. Yeah. Yeah. He's just okay. so long, man. And guess what? It's college basketball, so one play happened, which means more commercials. Oh, fantastic! Just, just want to point out, that. I don't, I don't love Darian backing down Diara. I, I just don't love that. He, he's got a significant reach over him. Let's let, let pull Darian to the outside. Let's have him attack the basket vertically, or or even get those open three point looks. I don't want Darian backing down DR. DR is what is he six foot ten? RC is that six, right? Six nine something like. But six, he's got nine. like a seven foot wingspan. The yeah, dude I mean, is long. I mean, yeah, he's long. Sure. Um, I I love Darian Williams backing down those like undersized fours or six eight and below. I don't love that. Um, but you know, if he's gonna back him down, maybe he gets a kick out if they double him. But something to keep an eye on. Not a big fan of that. Um, that DR guy's he's easily their best rim protector. And he is uh, Darian Williams is six foot eight. So don't love that, RC. Yeah, no, it's and again, I think Texas Tech is gonna make some um adjustments here. They always seem to yep. um from that standpoint. I, I I'd love to see again the small ball lineup in the sense of having Darion at the top of the key, use him as the screener. That would take away Diaria completely. Yeah. Um, from the rim, which opens up lanes for backdoor cuts for guys like Chance, whether that's Pop, whatever it may be, and really just opportunities in theory for Joe to go downhill um, and have a chance at the rim. So, I mean, Texas Tech is doing some things that are frustrating, but overall, I mean, like, I'm not saying this is as bad of a start as you could have envisioned for Texas Tech, but by no means is this a good start, and you're only down three, and this is a pretty solid start for the Wolfpack, all things yeah. considered. This is kind of similar to what they've been doing, um, except they've made a couple more shots. So um, that's what it comes down to in terms of what they were doing in the ACC tournament. Very, very similar um, in that regard. Lawrence says just because he's big doesn't mean he can get away with it. Rules are rules. Uh, I mean, they're going to let you be physical. I mean – it, it, it's within the rule, you know, the rules in terms of what he's doing for the most part, that elbow. Okay. Yeah. We could have a discussion about that, but I mean, he's going to use his size to his advantage as he should, uh, just like Warren Washington would use his size to his advantage. If a guard was on him, you know, like it, it's an advantage for him. 
Um, let's see here. Um, got a couple people saying start flopping. All right, we'll see where that goes. Um, take the charge against Burns. He's extending his forearm every time. Yeah, that last one with the Warren one, I don't think there was any – like there was contact body-wise, but nothing illegal. The thing that was illegal was the hook. He clearly hooked him with the elbow. So that was the thing that stands more out to me. 3,700 strong again. If you're on YouTube, like the video. We've got over 150 people watching in there. Just 77 likes. Let's get those numbers up, people. And then we've got, let me see, on Twitter right now, 3,600. you love to see it. And we're going to be live throughout the whole game here. Um, currently right now, 8 of 19 is NC State from the field. 7 of 19 for Texas Tech in that regard. Texas Tech will have the ball out of this media timeout. The possession arrow will shift to NC State after that jump ball. Um, and obviously no jump balls um, in college basketball. But that's what you love to see out of a timeout right there. Chance McMillan with a quick bucket assisted by Darion Williams moves it to a one-point game. Now, I, I, I love, Austin, what Texas Tech does out of timeouts. Like, that's one of the things that really just stands out to me in terms of creating space. What Grant McCaslin does has, is just phenomenal in that regard it, it is yeah it is and i i've tweeted about it in the past i mean hop on to synergy sports they they are one of the best teams for a while there they hit the end, end stretch of the big 12 play they were the best team in the entire country um in out of timeouts points per possession um grant mccaslin is a wizard i said that earlier um looks like dj horn uh pop pop isaacs misses the three there um i love their out of timeout plays though absolutely rc that's just too deep of a three from Pop there, though, 100%. I, I, he, uh, I don't know. Don't love that. It felt like one of those things that was forced after Joe had a bad first. I, I, I don't know, man. I don't I don't mind that shot in theory because it's in rhythm. But, yeah, yeah. probably one of the too. Foot or a, little, two a little deep. Yeah, that's fair. There you go. That That's what Pop needs to do tonight. Attack the hole. Get them yep. in foul trouble. Agreed. Go out to Jay Burns. Go out to Yara. And notice how that started. He attacked in transition. Warren yep. kind of set a moving, I say moving screen. It wasn't a screen. He was just trying to get to a spot. Pop went behind him, puts Morsell in a bad spot, creates a foul. And you got to get the fouls closer to even here. As it stands right now, yep. um, NC State um, has four foul calls, and then Texas Tech has seven. Um, NC State's in the bonus already with about 651 remaining on that. Pop misses the layup after the out-of-bounds play, and Diaria gets the rebound for NC State. Just, they they don't look smooth in the pick and roll like I thought they would tonight. Um, and that's a credit to NC State a little bit in terms of their hedging that they're doing. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Good defense there, RC. Good defense yeah. there on DJ Horn. Um, they, look a little, they look a little nervous right now. I think they're going to be fine, though. That's good. That's a good pull up there from man. Tucson's feeling good. Uh, that's a that's a good sign for Texas Tech fans. He looks good right now. Yeah, one field goal in four minutes before that Joe pull up right at the left elbow goes straight through the nylon. The Red Raiders retake the lead, 24-23, But give it right back to NC State as there goes that man. DJ Burns gets two points for the Wolfpack and. It's very interesting to see what they're doing. They're almost just straight up, regardless of out. Yeah, you, you got to call that on DJ Burns, though. Like yeah. He's, he yeah, yeah. You, you can't have your arm extended like yeah. that. That's a great move, by the way. Not, not yeah. anything. There shouldn't have been a foul on the shot or anything. But he has his arm extended. You, you can't have that. Um, Joe Tucson again, RT. Joe Tucson. Is this the Joe points. Tucson game? 13 points. Half of the Red Raider points so far. Oh, what a block by Warren Washington. Great play by the Red wow. Raiders center. Great defense, guys. Great block by Warren Washington after he moves over from DJ Burns on a cutting Diara, who got it off mm. the backboard, and Warren Washington just absolutely annihilates that basketball. But uh, NC State gets it right back, and, well, there goes that man again. DJ Burns out of the timeout gets a quick two points. For NC State, he is now up to six. And again, I 
the the physicality aspect, the body aspect doesn't bother me from DJ Burns. But when you're extending your arms and using your elbows like that, that's when you have to – that's when something's got to change. Like that's he – he's hooking Robert right there. Yeah. That's a hook. And to be fair, you could probably call that foul on RJ. And speaking of RJ, a quick two-point. There we go. That's what I'm saying. I mean, there, DJ Burns is great, but he's kind of a liability defensively. You know, if you I'm, get him on his heels, he can't do anything. He, he, he really, truly really can't. He's winded right now, RC. He is. I mean, he, well, he's I mean, like a boxer in the you know in the eighth round. I mean, he's winded right now. They who can you only got, by the way. Who you got, Jake Paul or Tyson? Oh, I mean, sure. oh, that's an offensive foul on Burns. That's two fouls. Yeah. Two fouls go. on Burns, guys. There you go. Four minutes remaining. Again, the only Red Raider in foul see, trouble They right may now. review that. Screw they it. may review that for a for a potential flagrant. But let's just see. I don't know. He looked like he gave him a high elbow to the to the face. He's been flinging his arms. I'll give yeah. you that. Like I don't agree with the body things that everybody's talking about in the comments. Let's see. But let's he's see. definitely throwing some bows. Oh, he's no. throwing bows. <laughs> he didn't get an elbow. He put his he put his booty out. <laughs> That's a big boy right there. My gosh. Is that what sent Pop flying? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. To be fair, it is like a semi-truck. My Dude, God. That Pop just got, he just got lit up. But two fouls on Burns, guys. That's that's significant to track. Yeah, th this is Great a good drive sign. Great Pop. Oh, my gosh. This is a good sign for Texas Tech as Pop Isaacs gets the two-pointer there. Texas Tech increased their lead to three. You haven't had really anything from Pop. And that was a great move right there, reminiscent of what DJ Horn did earlier. You haven't had a lot from Pop early outside of six points. This has been Joe Toussaint carrying you. Yeah, You haven't got the rest of your offense going, and you're still winning by three here. Mm, that's another offensive rebound, man. Another, off another second chance point right there. Yeah, not ideal as Diaria gets the quick two off of the rebound. He Diaria is just, let's be real, He's he, he's flat out. Just bullying. Yeah. Darian Williams you're boxing down him low. out. Darian Williams. And then not... Joe Toussaint gets blocked on the other end by Marcel. Second chance points for NC State as it stands right now. Nine, five for Texas Tech. TV We've got immediate off. timeout after a rebound from Ben Middlebrooks. There is 3 11 remaining. Texas Tech. Leads at 30-29. Aren't you glad you're not watching Virginia basketball and teams that know how to score? It's great. This is a fun game, RC. I'm having it fun, is. man. This is uh, – guys, as a Texas Tech fan, I know we got some NC State people in here. I'm feeling pretty good right now. Um, Burns is up to two fouls. I mean, he really has been a key kind of cog to their offense tonight. Obviously, Diara and Middlebrooks are having a pretty good night as well. I yeah. think Grant McCaslin is going to clean up this kind of second chance points that they're getting – Darian Williams, I don't know if it's his ankle. He's kind of struggling to box out right now. I don't feel too bad right now as a Texas Tech fan. The three-point shot hasn't been falling yet. You're kind of having your way with your guards attacking the rim. Um, how are you feeling, RC? I don't feel too bad right now. Yeah, you got to clean it up with Diaria. Um, that's just yeah. a clear mismatch right now with him and Darion. Um, and, and, and the thing is, is I don't, I don't know how you address it. Um because the lineup that comes to mind is you put Warren out there with RJ, but that becomes a liability in the sense of you don't have as much shooting. And that's something that Texas Tech desperately needs because yeah. that's one of their strengths. Um, you wouldn't know it by looking at the screen right now and seeing that 20% though. Um, I, I think overall, I feel okay. Um, it's good to see that Texas Tech is winning right now in the sense that really Joe is the only consistent offense you have. And he's had some really bad shots, I thought, um, in terms of shot selection and sense of the threes. But overall, yeah, I, I feel all right. I mean, you, you kind of look at it from a Texas Tech standpoint. Let's pull up the box score real quick so everybody can look at that um, there on your screen. And again, if you haven't already on YouTube, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button. And then uh, also... Uh, Hey, if you're on Twitter, hit that retweet and like the video as well. Let's get over 4,000 Red Raiders in here. I think we can do it. We're at 3,800 right now. Let's let's get 4,000 in here. We got this. All right, here we go. We've got Joe Toussaint with 13 points, um, two rebounds, two assists, five of nine shooting. I mean, he's been effective if he's not shooting a three. Pop Isaacs, 
He's played okay. Um, some of his shot selection from deep, you might not love it, but Austin didn't like it. I didn't mind it. I think that's a personal preference. Doesn't matter either way. The guy I think you got to get going more in this one is I think you need to put the ball in Darion Williams' hands. Yeah. And- a way at the top of the key to make him a playmaker and a facilitator. But a big sign for Texas Tech is this. Warren Washington has played really, really well so far. Two points, five rebounds, does have a foul, does have a turnover, but also has a block as well. So he has looked good in his return, and he has played 10 minutes so far. Remember, early on, before we started this and the game actually started, I said I thought he would play 10 to 15 minutes. Um, That is... Not the case at all. Um, It looks like he's going to play closer to 20. Austin's going to step away real quick and go to the bathroom. We'll leave that right there up there and excuse the little uh, blurry block, the box right there, but we'll be all right. Texas Tech currently leads at 30-29, 3-11 left. Again, about 3,900 of y'all in here tonight. Appreciate y'all spending y'all's time with us here on the Back to 12 podcast, whether you're watching on Twitter or YouTube. Either way, thank you for tuning in. Horn gets the ball out of bounds. O'Connell gets it down, and well, Burns is off the floor for NC State, but they still get the ball into the paint, but it's a turnover, and they call a late foul. I don't know about that, man. I don't know about all that. And now there's a little uh, a little bit of back and forth between Diaria and Joe Tucson. Okay. I think Joe was talking a little bit there that maybe Middlebrooks flopped a little bit because that was all ball. It was clearly all ball. Um, and then, oh, that, that's what that's what Joe was uh, a little heated about. Looked like Middlebrooks, when Joe was trying to get up, kicked him a little bit. But Middlebrooks makes both free throws. It's 31-30 NC State with just under three minutes remaining. Again, appreciate y'all spending some of y'all's Thursday night With us here, hopefully Texas Tech can move on to the next round where, well, earlier today in Pittsburgh, the biggest upset so far of the NCAA tournament happened, and that was between the Kentucky Wildcats and Oakland Golden Grizzlies, where the Golden Grizzlies, the 14 seed in the South, upset the number three seed and sent Coach Cal, well, crying back to Lexington. So there you go. Austin about to hop back in here. There he is. Got Pop at the top of the screen there. Pop Isaacs misses the floater. NC State secures the rebound and gets going. It's DJ Horn who calms it down after that. And then a quick shot. And they, uh, well, get the rebound as Texas Tech. It's Darion Williams who gets it. As you can see, Chance McMillan misses a three. How do we feel about the Sour Patch Kids shoes, Austin? Oh, we can't hear you, Austin. Back? There we go. Now we can hear you. There we go. Nice. I Listen, I'm, I'm, I like the Sour Patch shoes, but the threes aren't falling right now, so I don't know how I feel. Um, Fair enough. Fair enough. I, do, I, I think, we're, I think we're, we're kind of due for a correction, right? Like this is a really bad three-point shooting kind of effort so far. For it, Tech. I mean, I'm not trying to be negative. Um, is it just one of those nights, unfortunately, for Texas Tech potentially? You know, um, there you go. With NC speaking State. of three, there's Morcel. He makes a three in NC State. Now up four points. It's 34-30. Wolfpack with just over a minute remaining in the first half. I will say this again. I mean, we're obviously trying to look at a positive here, and that's just a great play by Horn to push the ball up. Um in terms of trying to get a good shot there. And then Joe with another three. Got to figure that out if you're Texas Tech at halftime. Um, It's been stretches here. Again, a three-minute scoring drought for the Red Raiders after Joe Toussaint pulls this three-pointer here and the Wolfpack get the rebound with 47 seconds remaining in the first half. It's actually going to be out of bounds. on that. And then Oof. Middlebrooks makes another two. It's 36 30 Wolfpack. And they're seizing the momentum is NC State going into halftime. Got some comments here. This is piss poor play. I agree. Kyle says pop is costing us. I don't, 
I don't know how the hell you think that. I mean, I just don't think they're making shots right now. That's the biggest thing. They, they can't make shots. Um, it's not pop. I mean, I do, I do find it interesting how pop is always the one to blame on everything. Um, up to two fouls, to, uh, two fouls for Warren Washington. Yep. Yeah, man, this middle Middlebrooks just having a really good game. Um, Career night for him, and he makes the free throw. 37-30. He's, really he's their only kind of backup forward that they have, and he's kind of just feasting right now. The way that I will say, I will say right now, guys, everything's going right for NC State right now, in my opinion. Um, just something to think about. Yeah, Middlebrooks makes that th uh, three-point play after the end one. It's the largest lead of the night for NC State. About to head to halftime. NC State seizing all the momentum, but there goes know. that man. Darian Williams. Darion Wash Darion Williams, excuse me, right before halftime, gets Texas Tech on the board with a three-pointer. Make it a four-point game headed into the locker room. It is 37-33. NC State, and he's and of course Darion makes it in his spot, right? That's his spot. Yeah. Uh, it's Darion a great pass is, by Joe too. Great pass yeah, he's by Joe. Automatic in the corner. I mean, just absolutely automatic um, yeah. from that spot. All right, let's uh pull up some halftime stats for Texas Tech and kind of look at what potentially is going on for Texas Tech here. Rebounding battle, sixteen for Texas Tech. 17 for NC State, Wolfpack, nine free throws, Texas Tech only four. Um, Texas Tech is three for 14 from three. NC State is three of eight. It's a pretty big difference in terms of shot selection for Texas Tech um, and NC State. Overall, though, um, what kind of stood out to you, Austin, in that first half for Texas Tech? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that we kind of talked about it a little bit earlier uh, just just settling for for too many three point shots. Fourteen three point shots in the first half, guys. That's just too much for this Texas Tech team. I say it all the time. This is a team that you really want in that fifteen to twenty three point shots per game range. Not because they can't make them, but because their strength is not just to be like jacking up threes like this. I mean, you're yes, you're you're twenty one percent from three right now, RC. But fourteen threes is too much. Um, this is. Look, how how successful has Texas Tech been so far when they've been aggressive and attacked the basket? Very, I mean, very successful. Their their shooting percentage in the paint tonight has been very good. Um, Joe Toussaint has pretty much had his way in the paint. Pop Isaacs has looked pretty good in the paint. Um, but too many three point shots. Let's stop settling. Um, and then off the the second chance points, the offensive rebounds. Uh, you got to shut down Middlebrooks. Got to shut down Diara. Yeah, I mean, for me, um, I mean, Joe Tussaud shooting five threes is about four too many, um, yeah. in, in my opinion. Um, you know, standout is you, you You mentioned Middlebrooks. I mean, wh where the fuck is this coming from? I mean, 14 points, three rebounds. He's six of six for the line. He's been the most aggressive player on the floor by far. Like, I think that's the thing that stands out to me from a Texas Tech perspective is I don't mind them shooting threes if it's their shooters shooting them, right? Like the Chance McMillan, Pops of the World and everything like that, um, especially if they're in rhythm and everything. But the fact that they're just not aggressive really at a consistent level at all. I mean, Middlebrooks has done a phenomenal job tonight. Give him his credit, right? I mean, again, 14 points. Six for six from the free throw line. He has 14 points in 11 minutes. Um, I think Dizzy says it best in the chat right here. Texas Tech is just getting outworked. Yeah. And I can promise you this. They're getting their ass chewed right now at halftime about that. Because if we're seeing it, I, I promise you the coaches are seeing it, right? Like, obviously. And so there's going to be an adjustment. Um, yeah. There's no doubt about that. Um I, I really am interested to see what Texas Tech does from a scheme perspective um, and does the officiating change from the sense of how physical they've allowed them to be so far. Um, and this is fine. I mean, as long as it goes both ways, but Texas Tech has to capitalize on that. You know what I mean? And they're just not being physical really at all. Yeah, they're not. Um 
And just looking at the box score here, uh, surprisingly, Texas Tech only three turnovers in the first half. Um, pretty clean on that side of the ball. Just again, just the, the second chance points. I, I mean, that's the difference between Texas Tech being up right now um, or, or being down, you know. So clean up the rebounding, got to get more physical. The good news is for Texas Tech fans, Grant McCaslin's the head coach. Um, this guy knows how to coach. He knows how to win. You got Dave Smart out there as well. Um, at the end of the day, though, these guys just got to go out and, and kind of show some effort. I, I don't yeah. think Kerwin Walton really came into this game super locked in. He, he's just been kind of, I think he gave up a couple weird second chance points in that in that first ten minutes. Um, some just some kind of lazy effort on the rebounding. Um, so let's see what happens. I just I think that got it. Like you know, kind of like the chat said, you got to come out and be more physical in the second half, be more disciplined on the glass, and I think we got a great chance. Yeah, I mean, and again, Tech fans won't like to hear it, but give NC State credit. I thought they played a really good first half um, in a lot they of did. perspective in terms of things that they need to do to win a basketball game. I thought they did a really good job of that. Um, now, it's one half of basketball, but when you look at it from a Texas Tech standpoint, as we've mentioned here a couple times now, um, I don't really think Texas Tech did a lot of things well. Um Really, you know, um, outside of I thought they were OK on the boards in some regards. Um, I thought they were far too loose in terms of what they were trying to do in the sense of defensively and the hand checking and everything like that. Um, but I, I think, again, we've seen it time and time again with this Texas Tech team when they have bad first halves. They typically come out and there's a little yeah. bit of a run and something changes. And I don't know why tonight would be any different. Um, but you got to give credit to, um, NC state. And I think Joe says it best. Like if we just want to call a spade a spade, like tech played like shit and they're down four. I mean, I agree. If tech plays like that in the big 12, they're probably down 15 at half, you know? So, um, give credit to NC state in that regard, but you got to figure out a way, I think, to get Darion at the top of the key and allow him to facilitate and be the playmaker for Texas tech. Um, and also you, you have to get better at the pick and roll. That's probably the main thing. I think Texas tech has to really focus in on in the second half, because we mentioned it, what felt like, I don't know, eight, nine times when um, Burns is in that pick and roll situation, he just can't catch up, you know? And I think that's something that Texas Tech can capitalize on from that perspective. Um, but, yeah, let, let's read the chat real quick and see who's all in here. We'll shout out some names. We've uh, got Kyler. We've got Grant. We've got Jake, Renee, Chris, Eric. Eric! We've got Nate in here. We've got Vessi, um, Joe, KG. Yeah, I agree with you, KG, in the sense of that three before half was absolutely huge. Um, Marco's in here as well. If you're watching on YouTube and you haven't already, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, goes a long way in helping us put out more content. And if you haven't already as well, go to Scarlet and Black Inside, Scarlet and Black Insider.com. Go subscribe, use the code SBI, one dollar for your first month get the latest happenings in Texas Tech men's basketball, not only on the hardwood, but also the portal. And Texas Tech has been active in the portal, to say the least so far, in terms of reaching out to guys. If you want to know exactly who the Red Raiders have reached out to, go to the description on YouTube, or you can just look on my Twitter profile and scroll down a couple, and you can see sbiinsider.com or scarletblackinsider.com. And, hey, your first month is a dollar for the best Texas Tech content you can find on the Internet. All right, let's see. Logan asked, do you think we should start Warren second half? It seems like he was more effective offensively. I mean, I think it's one of those deals where R I thought RJ played okay. I don't, I don't know your thoughts, Austin. I thought he played okay. I mean, Burns is just physical. And if you're going to if you're gonna allow him to play that physical, you obviously have to allow RJ to play physical as well which means bumping him and trying to get him off the block without calling fouls. It can't, it can't just go both one way. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and guys, DJ Burns is not the problem right now. I mean, he has six points and he has no assists. I mean, that's, if you were to tell me that's what DJ Burns stat line would be in the first half, I'd say that's a win. 
Um, he's not the problem right now. The problem is Middlebrooks and Diara. Uh, that's literally the problem right now. 14 points for Middlebrook. This is a guy that averaged five points a game throughout the season. He is feasting down low. And it's his, it, I mean, yes, he's much longer than the, you know, than Darian Williams, um, not Warren Washington, obviously, but he's also just playing his ass off right now. He's six of six from the free throw line. He's getting to the free throw line. He's drawing contact. He is, I mean, guys, if, if Middlebrooks has, you know, five points right now, Texas Tech is up by a good amount. Got to shut down Middlebrooks. You got to get more physical on the glass. That is literally the only reason Texas Tech is down right now. I don't think there's any reason to panic about Burns or about Pop or about anyone else. I think the three-point shot will start falling for Texas Tech if they just take smarter shots, um, be more aggressive offensively. Again, shut down Middlebrooks, shut down Diara, cut out the second chance points. Texas Tech's right back in this game. Yeah, I mean, Texas Tech is also going to have to just shoot better from three. I mean, yes, just dog shit percentage in terms of 21%. Um, you got to be better. Um, in that regard. And this is a good point by Mark here. NC State did their homework. They know we shoot threes and they're guarding the line heavy. I agree. That's where the pick and roll comes in. Like they, they, they got to be better in the pick and roll type setting. I think Texas Tech does. Adam says we got to crash the glass and Joe Toussaint needs to turn into UConn Kimba. I think you got to get others involved. I think Joe has done a phenomenal job in keeping you in the game. But in the second half, you have to get a guy like Chance or Pop well into double figures if you're going to win this basketball game. Like that, that, that's gotta happen. If not both. Um, Alyssa says, I like RJ on big guy better than Warren. I think that that's fair. I mean, some people in the chat have been t saying Warren looks tentative. I, I, I probably would be too, you know, if my foot was injured and I was a seven footer and I'm gutting this out, right. That's not an excuse. It's a reality. And you have to adjust if you're Texas tech. Um, but that's part of it. Um, Nick says, we just need to see a few go through the net. Yeah. I, I'm very interested to see, what this first four minutes look like, because I think it's going to be vitally important for the Red Raiders um, in the sense that, okay, you struggled in the first half. Most of your guys did um, outside of Joe. Darion was all right. Six points, four rebounds, three assists, made that last three there in the last couple of seconds. But um, again, I think the biggest thing for the Red Raiders is, yeah, you got to make some shots. Again, we talked about it, 35%. That's where you need to be if you're going to win this basketball game, I think. And you shot 21.4% in the first half. So, I don't know. I, I, I believe in positive regression. I don't know about y'all. Um, you better hope it happens for Texas Tech because they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna need it um, in the second half. This is a good question from Jake. What about playing uh, Yalahu? Yeah, I think it's not off the table. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's off the table at all um, in that regard. I think you have to – listen, this is your season, right? Anything that you think is going to help, do it. Just do it, you know? Um, let's see. Uh, this from Dingle Runs Fast. He, he really actually does run fast, Austin. He's really, really fucking fast, actually. Um, we need to drive the paint more and take the foul or attempt a damn basket and quit the bullshitting. Blunt to the point. I can respect it. I can also respect that we have 5,000 people in here right now listening to us. Appreciate each and every one of y'all spending some of your Thursday night. It is halftime up in Pittsburgh. Your Red Raiders are down by a score of 37 to 33 to the NC State Wolfpack. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video on YouTube and on Twitter. A simple retweet goes a long way, as well as following Austin. Austin, they can find you at Austin Massey SBI, correct? That's right. There we go. And you can follow me at RCMB323. And again, if you want one of these, hopefully Texas Tech wins. If Texas Tech wins, I'm debating on doing one of these lives for the round of 32. But I will say this. It is my birthday on Saturday, and it's a pretty monumental one, Austin. Don't let the baby face fool you. There's going to be a different, a different number in front of my age now. And if that doesn't scare the shit out of me, I don't know what will. Um, but there will be a different number in front. And uh, I'm not planning on it right now, if Texas Tech wins this game, to have another live stream here. But but that will change if we reach a certain number of Super Chats on here, which is $50. And you'll get your comment on the screen. So there you go. Just another incentive. Get a shout out, everything like that. So that's the incentive. Again, Joe, God damn, dude. 
You see that shit? You see what Joe just said in the chat? 40? 40. Now, MJ gets it. Thank you, MJ. Yeah, no, turning 20. Yeah, the baby face assassin over here, you know? No, but yes, Jake is right. It is the dirty 30, which is just scary as hell. Um, you know when you 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 know when you turn like 20? This is a sidetrack because um, who said it in the chat right here? Uh, Dama said it right. Like, this is a long-ass halftime. Holy shit. Um, oh, yes. And then shout out to Marco. Sending the two bucks in. Appreciate you, Marco. You're a consistent listener to everything we do here on the Back to 12 podcast and all the content I put out. So really appreciate you, my guy, in the super chat. Um, let's see. Um, man, I, I I think for me, Austin, the scariest thing about like turning another age is like 20 is cool. You know what I mean? Like you're excited to turn 20, right? You're excited to do that. But once you get to three, fuck, you know? It's a little scary. You're like, oh, you know, you really start to think about things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and listen, I'm excited about it. Don't get me wrong. I know that it's still young. Don't get me wrong. I know that I'm over here complaining about it. I really am excited for it. But I will say it is funny, like all of my friends, like, for example, in our uh, our Texas Tech um bracket challenge we had the password is rc almost 30 <laughs> i'm like bro what are we doing come on man <laughs> what are we doing also seriously hurry the hell up cbs my god this is a long ass halftime no kidding my gosh hey, graham says though in the chat what do we need to do better in the second half uh, my answer rc is just be more physical on the glass i mean i i just felt like those those couple second chance points, not just physical in the glass, but be physical with Middlebrooks, be physical with Yara. Um, again, in my humble opinion, we've done fantastic against DJ Burns. Six points, no assists, two turnovers, two fouls. That's pretty damn good. I mean, the guy is a, what do they call him? The walking refrigerator with ballerina feet or something. That, that's what everyone yeah, said. Yeah. I yeah. mean, the guy is he is a badass. And and tech has done great. The, the 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 one guy who is absolutely feasting against Texas Tech is not the guy that we expected. It's Ben Middlebrooks. The guy had one point against North Carolina uh, in the ACC championship. He is 14 in the first half. Let's just reel it in. Uh, you know, get get more physical on the glass, be more disciplined, and I think good things will happen. I agree. I mean, I I just don't think Texas Tech was aggressive. Um, I mean, really at all. Um, in, in the first half outside of like three plays, um, to be honest, um, I thought they settled quite a bit, um, for long range shots and those kind of mid range shots that you just don't want to take at all. Yeah. Um, and I thought NC state was the far more aggressive team and perfect example is who you're talking about Middlebrooks. It felt like every time Middlebrooks got the ball, he was power dribbling and getting into the restricted area. And that says a lot. Um, you know, we've talked about it virtually all year, whether you listen to Austin or myself for tech content. Like we we knew that, you know, maybe the bigs were going to be an issue. But over the last seven games, really best five, Texas Tech has done a phenomenal job, specifically RJ, uh, Robert Jennings and Amelia Lahu um, being serviceable. Now, obviously, <laughs> you're not you're not playing DJ Burns every night, you know, um, so there's that. But I, I do think that that's going to be a primary objective for Texas Tech during halftime is the sense of the physicality. And that is a word that Grant McCaslin has used what feels like more than the word the this year in press conferences in terms of what Texas Tech needs to do um, in the second half. And again, over 5,200 people in here right now. I, I told Austin the goal for this was 20K between Twitter and YouTube. I think we can get there on YouTube. We need a little bit more likes to get the chat going over there. So go like it on YouTube, share it to Facebook, whatever it may be on Twitter. Doing a pretty damn good job right now. We're over 5,000 people on Twitter. Okay. So we're doing a good job. Just like the video if you're over on YouTube and uh, get in that chat while you're at it as well. Um, Nick says, damn, 5K listening to y'all. Sweet. Yeah. We appreciate each and every one of y'all. It's at 5,280 right now. There we go. And we've got uh, another timeout in terms of uh, 
I, you know what? That, 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 that's the thing that pissed me off. Let me go on a tangent real quick, um, Austin. You know that commercial to where like they go in and they talk for like 30 seconds and then they go right back to four minutes of commercials? Oh my gosh. What the it's fuck are we doing? I like, know. I understand you got to make money, but NCAA, you make a billion dollars this month. You have you, you own a certain color of black. Did you know that? I did not know that. Is that, is that a real so, thing? NCAA owns a color of black. Like they own it. It's nuts. The reason I found that out is when I was on the Final Four journey, um, obviously there was black curtains everywhere behind the scenes in terms of the media rooms and everything. And I just asked the official one day, I was like, what's up with all these curtains? And they were like, oh, yeah. Yeah, we spend $2 million a year on curtains. And we own the color. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's fucking nuts. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, appreciate you, Joe, um, for all the love and tuning in. You've been consistent with it. We've got Liam. Is this still halftime? Yeah, dude. I've, I'm actually 45 now. I was yeah. going to say, my gosh. It, it, I know Renee said it was like 20 minutes, but bro, it feels like a year and a half. Brutal. Um, Brutal. And then Lawrence says, geez, RC, I remember when you and Lyle – we're trying to get to 1K. Y'all are rocking it. Yes, I appreciate that. Now we're we're on the journey to five or 10,000. We're on a journey to try to get to 10,000 subscribers by football season. So if you're listening on YouTube and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button um, and like the video as well. Austin says, uh, I think we're in a great position right now. Yeah, I, I, I don't think so. I, I, I do think so. Sorry about that. Um, and then... <laughs> Lawrence, I only have four beers left. They need to hurry up. There you go. Um, where is Lyle? Just been too busy? Yeah, he's been busy with his AD job um, there in Loveland, but he'll be back on the podcast soon. We'll be talking about Texas Tech wide receivers um, here in the next week or two, so that'll be fun. Brandon, too much talking. That's what the whole fucking point of this is, dude. That's that's what the whole fucking point is. Like, what 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 the fuck do you expect? What, what 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 am I missing something there, Austin? Like, what, 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 what does he expect? I, I like the last comment. The, these long TV breaks are giving the NC State guy uh, the big guy. Let him catch his breath. <laughs> that, that's a good one. I like that. That that that, that is honestly the entire plot. Hey, just like hey, Brandon said, we're talking too much, Austin. So we gotta shut the hell up. You know. I mean, damn, I, I mean, I'm running out of breath, too. I mean, I, I'm like DJ Burns. I need to have a, a break in a second, too. This this halftime has been so long. Holy. But, <laughs> hey, it, it looks How like we're finally, you talking on the podcast. It look, right? you? <laughs> <laughs> looks like we're finally about to get back into the action. I am. I am. Uh, Holy shit. Thrilled. Yeah. DJ Burns is going to be able to run a mile after that halftime. Right, don't give God. him too much credit. Don't give him too much credit. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that now. Don't do that. Um, but you might be right. He's in better shape than me. I ain't even going to lie about it. Right? That dude would smoke us probably in, in a bunch. <laughs> what do you think his 40 uh, is as we wait for this to happen? 40? Ooh. What do we think? I'm like 5'2"? I'm thinking he runs under a 5. Really? I don't With know. With training? That. Yeah, I think he runs like a 4'9". He is pretty light on his feet. All right, here yeah. we go. We're back in, RC. Let's get it. All right, here we go. And – not a great start. That's unfortunate, but the Red Raiders respond right back and get a three of their own relatively quickly. After a horn made three, Texas Tech responds, and it is back to a four-point game. It's 40-36. But I agree with this comment. Nick says we're back. First five minutes is huge. Wholeheartedly agree, and it's a huge deal to see one go in for Pop Isaacs, yeah. I think. That is absolutely pivotal for the Red Raiders, a guy that has to get it going, and it's contested. Um, so that's big, that's big for Texas tech, but man, Robert Jennings on mm -hmm. DJ Burns, they drop it to him in the post about 15 feet away from the basket, power dribble, power dribble. And then DJ Burns gets to his left shoulder up and in it's 42, 36 NC state. That, that That's going to be interesting for me in the sense of does Texas Tech change how physical they are? And a great play by Darion Williams right there. Kerwin Walton in the game with three fouls. Pop gets past his defenders. 
but it goes out of bounds. And then Darion makes a two point jumper at the top of the key, assisted by Robert Jennings. Um, this feels like a game that's going to go down to the wire. It really it, does. It is. Yeah, it's a good um, shot from Darian there too. By the way, I mean he, he's clearly he's feeling pretty good. Um, yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about. You got to get him to the top of the key. I think that's where he's absolutely at his best if he has the ball in his hands and he is just a an elite facilitator. In my D. opinion, there we go. Jay Burns, three three fouls, three fouls. There we go. That, I mean, that's dude, that's, right that's just that's that small ball lineup time. Question good mark. Lord, dude. I mean, guys, Robert Jennings is a big boy. Like, this is not a small human being. I mean, goodness gracious. There's going to be people that say that's a flop, though. RC, let me know when you see that replay. Yeah, I just saw it. Like, is that is that DJ Burns' dad? That's funny. I mean, what 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 are we what are we doing here? He lowered his shoulder and everything. Yeah, and he threw his bow out. Like. Yeah, hey, maybe our NC State folks that are watching, do they isolate DJ Burns this much every yeah. game? It feels yeah. like this is like not a good strategy for them um, be, for this exact reason, because he's so big. It, it it almost looks like an offensive foul every time he backs someone down. And the shooting foul right there on Morrell, Joe Tucson will go to the line. Texas Tech down four with a chance to potentially chance to cut make it two. two. Yeah. They all, they it looked like they may have missed a, a little foul on that three point shot from Pop Isaacs too as well. Or yeah, I, I had to go back yeah, and watch it. I, I, I don't. I couldn't tell. I, I, was, we didn't see a replay, so I I think you could have said that as Joe misses the first one of two. Wow. Um, I think you could have called it a foul, but I'm not going to lie to you. I think it would have been very nitpicky. Um, and probably yeah, I couldn't but, tell. But um, Joe Tucson missing the free throw. A little yeah. surprising. He's been money from the free throw line. Knocks down the second, though. So yep. three-point game. We got a one-possession game. DJ Burns going to be on the bench for – I don't even know if that's a good thing because you got Middlebrooks absolutely feasting. Um, so we'll see. Well, this, this is this is where you're going to see if Warren Washington plays differently. That's the only matchup I'm watching right now is Warren Washington and Middlebrooks. Yep. I want to see what happens here. It, it, does Warren Washington become more physical in the second half? That's really what we need to see as Diaria knocks one down from D. 45-39 NC State. Not a great start to the second half for the Red Raiders as NC State with quick, quick couple of threes under their belt already here in the second half. And just great spacing by Diaria off the ball. Yeah. I mean, it, it's one of those deals where, again, that aggressiveness is paying off now for NC State as Pop Isaacs turns over the ball there. Um, shot up by NC State. Darion Williams gets the rebound. But not a good play right there from Pop Isaacs in terms of the turnover. Um, looked like he got fouled, to be honest, but neither here nor there. They didn't call it. Um, it's a good offensive rebound from Warren Washington. Yeah. And then up and in. Makes the layup. Love to see it. 45-41. NC State with just over 16 minutes remaining. Also, I love that Joe play where he was aggressive right there. That's yep. what you have to see if you're Texas Tech. And then the foul on Pop Isaacs with 16-28 remaining in the second half. Again, Joe Toussaint leading the way for the Red Raiders with 14 points. You got Warren Washington back. You got Darion Williams back in the lineup tonight for Texas Tech. Both have been playing, I think, solid is probably the best word I can say. Um, also, I don't know if that's a foul that looked like yeah. they had the ball there. Um, good sell job by DJ Horn. Nonetheless, they get the ball. Um, that's what you got to do sometimes. You know what I mean? You just got to sell it. Yeah, I, I, man, I've been, I've watched every game today and that has been called a jump ball almost every time, but whatever. Uh, okay. Okay. Fair, fair enough. The, the first, the first time pop clearly got his arm. I'll, I'll give him that. But after that got the ball, but they probably saw that first thing. Also, this matchup between Joe and uh, DJ Horn is just one to watch right now. I mean, it is really, really fun. Yeah. Um, Warren gets the the rebound. They move out. Middlebrooks blocks Pop Isaacs in the lane out of bounds. Red Raiders will get the ball with 21 seconds left on the shot clock. Shout out to all 5,584 of y'all 
tuning in right now. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button. And if you are watching on Twitter, hit that retweet and like the video as well. We'll be with you through the very end of this one as Texas Tech gets a quick two-pointer from Chance McMillan to cut the lead down to two for NC State with just under 16 minutes remaining in the second half. Horn out of the game for NC State after that blocked by Middlebrooks. Next play was obviously that Chance McMillan bucket that I just mentioned. Chance I, I McMillan, what man. He was doing from a really aggressive standpoint. Um, but, you, man, I, I know I've been saying give credit to NC State tonight, what feels like a lot, but they really have done a good job at locking up the three-point line in terms of open looks for the Red Raiders. Yeah, Texas Tech's got to get some stops here. I mean, their their defense is just kind of struggling a little bit. Yeah, Warren just – wow, Warren just gets that ankle, man, or that foot. I don't know. Just got yeah. beat right off the dribble right there. Yeah, Middlebrooks is absolutely cooking right now. I, I You wonder when do you make a switch if you're Texas Tech at this point. At, at yeah, the um, I agree. Got to wonder because Middlebrooks is just – Middlebrook's been the best player on the floor tonight for either team. I mean, he really has. He's been yeah. great. He just, he just, I mean, he just dusted Warren off the dribble there. He, I don't know if he can't cut or what, what's going on, but got probably got to put Rob back in there. Yep, I would agree. Darion beats somebody off the dribble, gives it to Warren, but oof. TV timeout. I'm not gonna lie. To you, I, I think that might be NC State basketball. Texas Tech might have got away with one right there. There's going to be uh, – yeah, that was clearly off Warren Washington. 3.3 um, seconds left on the shot clock in the media timeout. Um, again, like the video if you haven't already over on YouTube. Retweet. Let's see what we got on Twitter real quick in terms of how many people are watching over there. We've got 5,500 on Twitter right now. Y'all are showing out right now on Twitter. Um, we've got Cole who's in here. Um, uh, let's get to the likes real quick. Appreciate all y'all spending some of your, uh, again, Thursday night in the NCAA tournament with us here, um, on the back to 12 podcast channel. Let's get to these likes for a couple more shout out. I see a few more in here. Uh, we've got Tony, we've got Jacob, we've got Tad, Alfredo, Flash, and a few others as well. Um, I would not be surprised if they switch that call on the way back, Austin, in terms of making that NC State ball. They may. Uh, I don't. I don't know how they. I don't know if there's a rule. Well, I, I, I think maybe they just talk about it because they can't review it. No, uh, they can't review it. Yeah, we'll see what happens. It was definitely out on Warren though. But yeah, I. I, I mean, I understand McCaslin wants to keep Warren out there. I mean, he's a senior. I mean, he's obviously their best five man. But he. I mean, he's he got. Denied? Is, is he, though? I think that's a valid question. It is, yeah. I mean, we've, we've done plenty of, uh, you know, Jacob and I on the Hub City Hoops Talk podcast, we did a uh, film breakdown of that road loss at TCU and, and Warren, unfortunately, even when fully healthy, was the subject of, of some pretty poor defense at times and just kind of just – not really, uh, I don't know, I don't even know where, what I would call it, just almost being in the wrong place at the wrong time and, and just not being very disciplined, um, over jumping on uh, on passes and, and kind of just losing his man at times. And that's what you saw in Middlebrooks. He kind of jumped up a little ahead of him and he just cut, cut back door and, and he had an easy layup. So um, I don't know. I, right now, RC, I think he put Robert Jennings back in 100%. I'm playing a melee. Put in a Millie as well. I agree. I feel like the offense flows better with a Millie. That's the thing. I think he's a very good screener. Um, yep. And I'm not saying I want him shooting threes, but it's a nice threat to have. Because um, for those that don't know, in the Euro under 18, when he played for Finland, a Millie shot like 40% from three. I mean, he he can he can shoot the ball. Yeah. Um, and he shot like 80% from the free throw line over there as well. He hasn't obviously done that great as a red Raider in those two departments, obviously not much playing time either, but um, yeah, got to get better there again. Like the video over on YouTube. If you haven't already 
Got 200 people watching over there, only 100 likes. Let's get that up a little bit and appreciate y'all watching on Twitter. About 5,700 of y'all. Again, the goal between both of these total is 20,000 views. I think we can get there. We're well on our way right now. Um, also, who is this old man? Who is who, <laughs> the goat statistician? Apparently, that's out on. Oh, I don't know. Yep, that they switched cool. it. I told you. I thought they would it talk about it and it. change it because it was He's very older. clearly off Warren. Great defense. See, that's the kind of defense you need. Yep. Right there, it's like especially on, Horn, especially on Horn, you got to be aggressive on him. Um, oh, okay, he's the he's the statistician for them. All right, Joe Tucson draws the foul. Two two free throws. See, Lawrence gets it right here. If y'all are watching, like the damn video. Jeez, it's not that hard. Thank you, Lawrence. I know Lawrence. I sound like a broken record. I know, but good rebound there by Chance McMillan. All right, so you mean, on hey, the top, right? Uh, go to the rim gets fouled up. Oh, they're gonna give him the shooting, or are they gonna call that on the floor? Shooting, shooting, call yeah. The shooting foul. And in fact, he makes the first free throw. So there you go. Joe Tus. What's the best Joe Tucson, Austin? There you go. Aggressive. Aggressive. That's what we love. He's That's having a damn love. good game, man. I mean, we need uh, Texas Tech needs more guys like Joe Tucson right now. Surprisingly, I I never thought I'd be saying that this game, but it's just a fact. Veteran guards, man. And yeah, Nick, I know we're a couple seconds behind. Apologies yeah, behind. on that, but hopefully you're enjoying the commentary. Um, let's see. Alice said, would love to see Walton heat up. Yeah, I would too. I would also like to see him not foul anybody. Um, Middlebrooks with the offensive rebound on mm. that one. Again, just absolutely killing the Red Raiders is Ben Middlebrooks oh. right now and creating another possession. Goodness and gracious. And he got fouled, and he makes the first free throw. Who would have thought that freaking Ben Middlebrooks, of all people, would be the best player? And, and he, he's – let's just call it spade a spade. He's absolutely fucking cooking Warren Washington. He's yeah. Cooking. He's he, also he's made seven making, free throws. Like, Ben Middlebrooks looks like a guy that's going to do my taxes in four years. <laughs> I mean, RC, if you go and look at the guy's game log, he, he's this is he's already at a, a season high in points, and it, there's 14 minutes left in the game. What's his career high? Does it say? I mean, if I had to guess, he's already at it, but just, we'll see. Just unbelievable. unbelievable. He does miss the second free throw. Warren Washington gets the rebound. Chance McMillan from deep. Nope, DJ Horn gets the rebound for the Wolf Pack. Oof, wide open, to too. Wide open. Didn't even hit the rim. Yeah. Brutal. That's, again, you, you got to have somebody step up alongside Joe. And it's in rhythm, too. You 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 have to at least hit the rim there. And then Diara gets an offensive rebound for NC State. Kerwin Walton, another foul. Goodness for him. He, he He just looks lost. He he looks lost tonight. Man, just unbelievable from a Kerwin Walton standpoint. But on that one, I'm not honestly too mad at him because Warren was out of position again. And that's my biggest critique about Warren. I think he's obviously trying to get back into game shape. There's not very many things you can do to simulate that. But at the same time, he has taken some butt cheeks angles. I mean, just awful angles tonight. Um, he makes both of the free throws, does Ben Middlebrooks. It is 50-45 now. R.J. Jennings, R.J. Jennings, Rob Jennings back in the game for Texas Tech. About 13 minutes to go in this one. Get Walton out. Dude is not good tonight. Agreed. And there's a nice layup from RJ set up from Darion Williams to pull the Red Raiders within three. Love that play. Love that right there. That's the kind of play you need from Darion in the sense of the facilitation type role for Texas Tech. I think that's where they're going to strive. And also just a phenomenal cut from Rob. And then, of course, it, it feels like Texas Tech can't get a run going at all right now, Austin. Every time. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That was a great pass from DJ Horn right there. My gosh. You know, it's just one of those deals where it's 
Super frustrating. That was a really good pass from DJ Horn. Yeah. He's really good. I, Texas Tech's defense is just a bit in shambles right now. I'm not going to lie. I, Warren Washington does not need to come back in for the foreseeable, uh, foreseeable future um, based on what we're seeing from him and his foot. Agreed. Again, Darion setting guys up. Great pump fake by chance. Makes the shot. And there's a turnover by DJ Horn. Can the Red Raiders go Ooh. on a run here? That was a looked like an elbow to the face once again. I, it was definitely a charge, and that's what they called. I, I don't know if they're going to look at it, but yeah, they got to look at that one. I would think you could have an elbow to the back of the head. Yeah, you you would you would think you would think they have to look at that. Oof. Ah, they're not going to call it a bow. It was shoulder. Yeah, it was kind of. They could say. Are they, they going to? Are they say, looking at you know, it? Uh, above the What's the neck area up? type deal. Could be. Uh, we, I, I think that uh, we've seen flagrant. Like, they'll probably call it a flagrant, right? And we'll then take look at it. Hey, listen. The thing, the crazy thing is, though, is. Texas Tech, three points, man. Three points down. I mean, this is – I still – we still have not seen Texas Tech, like, put it together. Defensively, mm -hmm. struggling. Offensively, still – we're hanging in there, I think. Um, Warren Washington, clearly a liability right now. I just – I don't know what it is. It, it just feels like – I don't know if it's the foot, if he's just rusty because he hasn't played in almost a month. It's a that. little bit slow. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty clearly that, yeah. In my I opinion, think, uh, no, no. I think you're right. It, it feels like he's a step behind. Um, again, I just think you keep Robert Jennings in there, let Yalaho kind of come in. But uh, we got to Texas Tech's got to be more physical with Middlebrooks, and that's just that is what it is, especially on the glass. Um, yeah, yeah, he's rusty, like Lauren says in the chat. He's rusty. I agree. Um, can't get a rebound. He, he's getting kind of beat off the glass, and and just in general. Um, Kind of looks like a liability, guys. So let's take it. Let's take a look at the rebounds. Texas Tech has twenty-one. They're actually out rebounding NC State right now. And this yeah. was again, this was something that stood out to me from what NC State did in the ACC tournament was they they lost the rebounding battle multiple times, and they still found ways to win the game. Um, you know, for me, again, I think. I think Warren is rusty. I, I don't think there's any debating that. I am curious, though. Let me know in the chat, guys um, and girls. We got about 6,000 6, people um, tuned in right now, so appreciate each and every one of y'all. Like the video. Um, but let me know in the chat if you think that should be an F1. All I want you to type in is one if you think that should be an, a flagrant one foul on Horn right there because I, I think you got to look at it at least. I, I'm – I'm on the fence about it, Austin, because like he clearly didn't hit him with his elbow. Clearly didn't. But you could argue it's a hostile act above the head and neck area, right? Like you could you could argue that. And so, or I don't I don't think you can argue it. I think it's a fact. Do they call that an F1? I it's interesting, you know, from that perspective. I agree with Jake. Throw him out of the game. Yeah. I was gonna Why say Jake says throw him out. Let's yeah, do just it. fuck it. Rest of the tournament, you know, I wouldn't mind. I, I wouldn't mind seeing DJ Horn gone. Hit him with the F two RC. Come on, man. Yeah, I mean, that was clearly it was malicious to the neck, to the yeah, to the head. No. Did you hear uh, what he said about Grant McCaslin's grandmother? My God, <laughs> terrible, He's terrible. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just in, kidding. All, in all seriousness, though, I mean, this this is a it's not a bad place to be in for Texas Tech. I don't think it's you know I don't think the panic is is quite there yet. Um, only down three right now, so let's see what happens. Jail, I agree. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, just straight to jail. Yeah, straight to straight to jail. Um, no doubt about it. I, I've never seen anything worse in my life, to be honest. <laughs> I like DJ Horn, RC. I don't know about you. He, I like his swag. Like he's Dude, just. No, like, I I couldn't stop watching his tape for a good like three or four hours the other day, where I was just like, I hate that I have to dislike you for a good four hours. You know, um, they did not call an F one, but Texas Tech does have the basketball here and. Joe Toussaint, Joe and doing Joe Toussaint things tonight. He has been aggressive and yeah. really kept the Red Raiders in this game. He really has Joe Toussaint tonight. 16 points for the senior guard from the Bronx. Looked like flopped by NC State, and then they call another foul right there on O'Connell. So 
not going to be a shooting foul, but it will be a personal foul there. And to be to be honest, Joe kind of looked out of a he he sold that from the other angle. To be honest, Joe sold that the the um uh, the flagrant foul question I asked earlier. He definitely got fouled, but he sold it for the F one opportunity. He really yeah. did. It's good, good for look him. for Darian, man. Good look, and he just misses it. The three is just not falling right now. And then DJ Horn capitalizes off of a good look. It's a five-point game in Pittsburgh towards the Wolfpack. Yeah, you got to start making these threes if you're Texas Tech. Um, that's a good sign, though. Robert Jennings, shooting foul. DJ Horn. DJ Horn, still his first foul of the game there. Um, man, he's been – he's so crafty, man. He's so crafty in that regard. Like, I, I like the aggressiveness there. It's what I should say. It was a foul on Robert Jennings. Um, I like the aggressiveness by RJ because he had to come over and help. He was just late. You have to commit to it, right? Like, you have to commit to that charge, and he just didn't. I like the thought process, just not the execution. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. The NC State's just – they're playing out of their mind. I don't, I don't know what else to say. This is they, what they they've been for a while. I mean, they NC have not State taken team, a step man, back at all. all. Not yep. taking a step back at all since the, the tournament. They look fantastic. Yep. They don't even got DJ Burns in. Warren Washington back in the game. With the Red Raiders currently on the floor. Tucson, Isaacs, McMillan, Darion Williams, Warren Washington. I agree, Nick. This is a big point for Texas Tech. Missed three by Pop. Rebound NC State in transition. Three on two opportunity. Diara, dunk. Wolfpack. Eight-point lead, timeout, Grant McCaslin. Red Raiders in a bad, bad spot right now in Pittsburgh. Yep. Bad, bad spot. It's a bad spot, man. You're not playing defense. You're Again, I feel like, I don't know, you're, you're just not making your threes. I I can't even say that Texas Tech's taking bad threes this half. I, I Most of them have been wide open. You're just not making them. Um, defensively you're really struggling with Diara and Middlebrooks and, and obviously Horn. I mean Horn is a we we already know Horn is a an all-American kind of player, right? But it's the other guys that are really kind of torching people. Um Ballsy says why isn't Burns in? He's got three fouls right now. Also why um, the hell do you need him? Yeah, you don't need him. I, I mean, I would actually argue that NC State's playing better with DJ Burns on the bench right now, which is actually crazy to say, but that's how it's been tonight. Go look at uh, Middlebrooks and Diara's stats. I mean, yeah, Middlebrooks is playing better than Burns. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just a fact. What is he, what is he from the free throw line right now? I mean, I think he's made nine three free throws. Uh, he had four earlier. Let's see. Middlebrooks is nine of ten from the free throw line. Jesus Christ. I mean, and to be honest, typically I'm – I'm one to complain when a guy has double digit free throws that typically doesn't. But if you watch this game, Middlebrooks deserves at least eight of those with how aggressive he's been, you know? Um, that's just the case. I mean, it's just the truth of it in that regard. Um, yeah. I mean, he's made more free throws than Texas Tech has attempted tonight. And uh, to be honest, rightfully so. He's been more aggressive by himself yep. than Texas Tech has been as a team outside of Joe Tucson. I mean, dude, um, listen to this stat line for Middlebrooks right now. 19 points. He's got four rebounds, one assist, two steals, a block, zero turnovers. Nine of 10 from the free throw line. Yeah, that's in, that's tough. Pop Isaacs hurts us more than helps us. I don't know. I don't know about that. Um the, if you really want to get into like the the details of of the problem right now, I mean, it's just simply like NC State's got some some dudes on the in their front court that are just dominating right now. You know, I mean, Middlebrooks, that's always been the problem with Texas Tech this year. Their their front court is extremely thin. Warren Washington, this is his first game in almost a month. Um, he doesn't look good. Robert Jennings is a good player, but he, I mean, he doesn't really have this next level like Middlebrooks does. He's not going to put up 20 points in a game. Um, they don't have a guy like Diara. So it's kind of the difference right now, but Pop is struggling a little bit, but I mean, they're obviously, they're doing a great job defensively on Pop. I don't know what you would think about that RC, but it seems like they're not really letting him kind of get to his game. 
Yeah, let me shout out Sean real quick with the $5 super chat. Enjoy the channel. Team not looking good tonight. No, they're not, Sean. Um, I, I, I think it's now or never if you're the Red Raiders. Yep. It, it's got to happen now. And I, and I know there's 10 and a half minutes left, but you you, you got to make shit happen now. Like if you don't wake up now, this could get ugly with the momentum and how NC State's feeling. I'm telling you right now, you better wake the hell up um, yep. if you're Texas Tech. And they don't. And nope, turnover, bad pass. And of course, Morrisell capitalizes right away. It is a double digit lead for the Wolfpack in Pittsburgh. And the Red Raiders are in dire, dire straits with their season on the line. That was a really bad pass. Right. That's what you worry about with Tucson. I mean, it's very nice of you just to call it bad. I'd call it shitty, but yeah. <laughs> he like tried fucking to do awful. a no look pass. Like, come on, dude. What are we doing here? Yeah, no, just fucking awful by tech. It's now or never, people. This is it, in my opinion. 7-0 run from NC State. They want, they, they're they showing that they want it more right now. Tech has to wake up. Great pass by Pop. Warren, again, just can't find a rhythm. Pop from deep. Misses. Diara tried to get the rebound, but it goes out of bounds. Red Raiders get the ball. Um, Jackson says in the chat, they've been downplaying the ACC. I don't know if I agree with that. Like, NC State – has has lost a lot of tight games this year, but they're also playing like at their absolute peak right now. I, I, I don't know if it's an ACC thing. Um, and they went to overtime with Virginia. Virginia is terrible. Um, I think Another they're just playing really fucking good right now. And it looks like it's going to stay here. It's going to be a foul on Horn, who now has two. It was on Warren Washington. Foul's becoming a little bit more even now in this one. NC State with six. If Texas Tech can get to the one and one situation, maybe you feel better about this one. But yeah, um, yeah. Defense, not looking too hot. Great, great opportunity there. Just a better defensively by NC State. You got to figure something out from deep if you're Texas Tech, whether that's Chance, Pop, Darion, whoever it may be. There's just too much dribbling and not enough penetration offensively for the Red Raiders. Um, Warren just getting absolutely abused tonight yeah um, and then goes there's Darion hopefully he's all right goes over the bench he's showing how much he wants it but turnover for Texas Tech yeah I mean uh Jackson I I I, I can see what you mean I mean it's a, it's a good league like there's no doubting that um DJ Horn or DJ Burns now with two points <laughs> RC this NC State team man I don't know I mean they're they're playing really good right now um if Middlebrooks is dropping 20 a game, I don't know who's going to beat them. Goodness gracious. Jake Horn, the guy there we told you about early on, he gets two. It is a 12-point lead, and boys, it's um, it's not looking too good right now for Texas Tech. Now, they do respond with the Warren Washington dunk, but they are down double digits with just under nine minutes remaining. Got to get some stops. On the line. Got to get some stops. Defense has been awful today. You, you got to see one fucking go in, man. You got to yeah. see one go in from deep. I and, I, and I know it sounds bad because I'm right there with you. Some of these shots and, you know, it's easy to criticize pop, whatever. I get it. Um, some of these are open looks and he's just flat out missing. That's a great pass by him on the alley-oop. Um, there's no doubt about that. Maybe that sparks something for Texas Tech. But you got to figure it out if you're the Red mm -hmm. Raiders. Um, and you got to figure it out fucking fast. Um, yeah, what, what it, are we it, at? It really uh, does, in the physicality standpoint, it feels like the word that Grant McCaslin has used all year, Austin, physicality, it, it's it's catching up to the Red Raiders here tonight. It is. Texas Tech's also four of twenty from three tonight, which is uh I don't know. I mean, that's just it's just one of those games. This I don't know how that's not a foul on Burns, but okay. And then Warren clearly fouls him there, but I mean, it is what it is at this point, boys. I, I think you got to get Warren out of the game. Um, do you go zone here? You could. I mean, I haven't. Texas Has Texas Tech ran a zone at all this year? I, I just, like for maybe a couple possessions, but you got to throw a different look. Yeah. I mean, I, I think McCaslin has talked about it before. Like, I, we'll see. I mean, they got to do something. This isn't working, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I get, you got to get Warren out of the game. Simple and plain. Yeah, I don't get it. He's, he's just not himself tonight. He's just not. 
and then Joe misses the shot. Wolfpack with the defensive rebound. I don't they, know about out coach. He has a chance to be ugly right now. With I don't agree with that. This NC State team just won five games in a row and beat Duke and UNC. I, I don't know about outcoached. I think they're just playing fucking insane right now. Yeah, yeah. NC State's but, just but, rolling, but, Drew. You're right. Yeah, stop, really with stop with the outcoach stuff and all that shit. Don't do that. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how coaching has, you know, it, miraculously made uh, Middlebrook score 20 points tonight, yeah. right? It's just. Well, well um, I mean, they're just more aggressive. Nick said it best. They are the more aggressive team. Like, that's what it is. Like, Tech does not look aggressive in any facet of the game, whether that's defensively. And as soon as I say something, Pop Isaacs gets a steal, albeit off of a DJ Horn bad pass. Um, but oh, just, oh, all is, the momentum we talked about, in I guarantee you, every time you listen to a Tech podcast this week or any kind of media, radio, TV, whatever it may be, um, I mean, I don't know what the fuck that was by Joe, but um, it is what it is. Um, everybody was skeptical in terms of can NC State keep the momentum that they built in the ACC tournament going with the week layoff, right? I was skeptical of it. I'm not going to lie. They shut me the fuck up real quick. I, I, I mean, real quick, man. I mean, they have come out and they have done phenomenal tonight. Um, in a lot of components. Again, when you watched NC State this year, I think even their fans, if they're being honest about it, and again, there's no reason for you to be honest right now. Your team is beating the shit out of Texas Tech, and this is a Texas Tech podcast, right? I get it. Talk your shit. Um, they were pedestrian at a lot of things, right? They were either world beaters in the ACC in terms of the regular season, or they really looked like one of the worst teams in the conference. Like there was no real in between for them. And then they caught fire in DC and it's continued. I mean, this is what happens when you have a bona fide star in DJ Horn, who has been sensational tonight, 14 points, five rebounds, five assists. And then you have guys like Ben Middlebrooks step up off the bench and get you damn near 20 and be the most aggressive player in the game for either team. Um, it just sucks if you're Texas Tech from the standpoint of, you had a shit ton of momentum too. I mean, it, it's one of those deals where, you know, obviously the Houston game, but you didn't have Darion and you didn't have Warren. And now tonight you get your guys back. You wonder if rust is a big deal there. I, I think it's more than fair to say that it is. Um, but really what this comes down to, this is not coaching. Um, in my opinion, I, I just I don't think Texas Tech has been aggressive outside of Joe Tucson at all, at all. Um, and they're just getting absolutely worked. You you can see the multiple adjustments that this coaching staff has tried to make down low. Like you you can see it very clearly. The problem is Warren is taking bad angles and just looks at a game shape, which is, I think, logical for anyone that knows anything about basketball to think. Um RJ, I thought he's done actually a pretty solid job in terms of guarding Burns for the most part. Um, Bur Burns is getting a lot of you know leeway in terms of the aggression. That's fine. It is what it is. Um, I just don't think the players have played well tonight. Like, let's just call it what it is. Like, they, they, they aren't playing well outside of Joe Tucson. Nick, like, Pop is not shooting well. Chance is not shooting well. Kerwin has been more of a liability – it's really when Kerwin's on the floor, it's six on four, damn near. Like, let's just be realistic about this. Like, I understand the game's not over, but if you don't change something really fucking quick, if you're Texas Tech here in the next 748, your season's done so. And we're talking about the portal on Saturday instead of playing another game in Oakland and having a chance to play in DFW, period. That's what it is. Sorry for my tangent. No, you know what? No, I'm fucking not. I'm not fucking sorry for my tangent. Not. I like tangents. The people that watch me know that, Austin. I probably <laughs> tangent too much. If yes, you're watching on YouTube, and I know a lot of y'all are, be sure to like the video. Um, and if you're over on Twitter, retweet the video, like the video as well. Listen, there's almost 7,000 people in here. We don't have that many likes over on YouTube, and we damn sure don't have that many likes on Twitter. 
So help some guys out. And if you haven't already, head on over to the scarlet and black insider.com. You can subscribe to the website. Your first month is one dollar. There's no better deal in the Texas Tech media space. And hey, we're going to keep you up to date on the portal and everything else, Texas Tech men's basketball all year long. DJ Burns turns the ball over to Joe Toussaint. He gets a steal. Um, can they get a bucket though? That's going to be Joe the Tucson, big man. He's the only, I mean, yeah, he he hasn't, he's not the perfect player, but he's really the only one that's shown some fight tonight. I mean, honestly, um, it's been a rough game, man. And and credit to NC State. They yeah, they look good. I mean, they're just they don't shoot themselves in the foot. They play smart. Like they don't, they're not selfish. DJ Horn's a star, but he's not selfish. Like he doesn't take stupid shots. Just looks they look good, man. They really do. Um so many turnovers they have. Can't be much. Eight and half of them come from Burns. Texas Tech has seven. Another missed um, shot from Pop. It, it, it really just comes down to shot making in this. I mean, when we look at it, I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Texas Tech is shooting like shit. And oh, they call that a jump ball. A turnover by Pop Isaacs. Wow. And it's a missed layup. You got lucky there. Joe Toussaint down the floor right now. Up, Pop. They're going to call that a jump ball and it's possession arrow NC State. Everything going the Wolfpack's way right now. And it is – um. It's officially panic time for the Red Raiders. Let's just call it what it is. Um, it's not looking good. There, there's, there's, there's no turnaround. Minutes left in your season. You're down 14 points now after DJ Burns makes a layup. You better fucking get it in gear or it's one, two, three portal time in terms of what we're talking about in terms of tech content. It's that simple. Man, you think about it too from this perspective. Pop Isaacs is what? He's been – He's been sensational for the past, what, seven games? Is that fair to say? Yeah, I mean, he's been, yeah, he's been playing, but he's been playing better. He had that slump, you know, middle of conference play. Yeah. Um, but man, I don't know. But like, dogs for tonight. Um, he'll be the first one to say it too. Um, I guarantee you that. I mean, it, here, here's the thing, people. We, we, we talk about pop and, um, you know, Obviously, hasn't had a good game tonight. Let's just call it what it is, is Robert Jennings makes two free throws to pull Texas Tech within 12. Um, but let's look at it. You're, as a team, four for 21 from three. I get it. Pop has not looked good from three. He's been the primary guy in that regard. But as a team, you're still shooting 19%. Like this, and, and the thing is, is, you're not aggressive off the dribble whatsoever, um, except for maybe Joe Tucson. Um, it, it really is just one of those deals where he's had a couple of bad shots tonight, but he's not the only one. Warren's gotten cooked defensively a few times. Yeah. Um, you can't yeah, blame I mean, Joe. For, really? I mean, Joe has been, again, I will die on this hill. Joe has been the only one tonight that's really like actually left it all on the court. I have no clue what Kerwin's doing. And How's that guy, a foul, by the way? What's that? Oh, uh, yeah, I know. Foul. Yeah, I don't know. But he's the only one that's really given a shit tonight, quite frankly. I mean, I, I think Rob's been battling in the paint with, with DJ, but Warren got absolutely cooked tonight. I mean, you can't beat him up too much. He's coming off of one month of a, you know, hasn't played in a month. Pop has looked terrible tonight. Darian has not. I mean, he's injured. He's banged up. But outside of Joe, man, not a lot of heart tonight. Yeah, I think Drew brings up a good point, too, here for being critical of Pop. You're taking away a all Big 12 third team, or how many more wins do you have? Oh, yeah. Compared to losses. Like, you let's can't say that. that probably yeah. doesn't come close to the tournament if you don't have Pop Isaacs. Like, that looked like a hook, by the way, on Burns. I don't know. But he does that a lot. Yeah, he, he, he throws them bows, man. I ain't going to lie about it. He does that little hook spin move. It's a hell of a fucking move if you can get away with it. Yeah. Um, especially with his size, you know. And he misses both free throws. That's big. Okay, maybe you get a little bit of momentum here. I'm not trying to, you know, hype anything up. Let's just see what Texas Tech can do in the final, what, six minutes. It's Darion missing a three and Diaria getting the rebound. Man, just... Kyle says, thoughts on next year, because that's where we're at now. I mean, you're not wrong. You know, I mean, 
technically still could come back in this one, but you got to get longer, man. I, I, again, just kills this team. The rebounding, you got to get some better defenders. Like, let me ask you guys this in the chat. Who is the lockdown defender on this team? Could you name one for me? In the course of I the can't. probably Joe, right? You, I mean, maybe, right? But Joe's what, six foot? Probably I mean, who's your who's your who's your go to lockdown defender that you stick on DJ Horn? You know, we just don't have it. You don't have a you don't have a, a legitimate, you know, actual rebounder on this team. You don't have an you don't have a true athlete. Maybe Devin Cambridge was that guy before he tore it towards ACL. Um, but yeah, if Joe Tucson's your best defender, you know, at six foot, you're probably that's probably not going to be great for you outside of Joe. I mean. Darian's really struggled tonight. Warren's looked really bad. Um, again, there's just some there's some clear uh, roster flaws on this team, and I think that right now they're just being exposed. I don't really know how else to say it. I mean, yeah, I think it's very fair to say they're being exposed right now. I mean, Diario is mean, crazy. Luke says, how do you go from playing teams like Baylor and winning to losing to State? I mean, Luke. You put this NC State team up against Baylor, they may beat them right now with how well they played tonight. Yeah, I, mean, I don't they're think they're the hottest like, team in the country, right? I don't, yeah, they, guys, they just beat Duke and UNC. Like, they just won five games in five days. Like, let's stop acting like this is some terrible team. It's, it's about momentum in, in March, and they have great momentum. Roster flaws equal McCaslin. I mean, yeah, but they also got started in the portal. What they had to hire an entire, they didn't. They didn't even solidify their roster till July, June. Also, come on, man, it's injuries too. Um, they also finished tied for third in the Big Twelve. So, like, yeah, man. I mean, I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm upset too that they're playing like dog shit in the biggest game of the year. But now's not the time to say like, oh, this is McCaslin's fault or anything. Yeah, it's like, stop that, please. You, you you played your worst game of the year against arguably the hottest team in the country. Like, th that's what's happening right now. Um. It is what it is. Let's see what else um, there is. Because I, I saw a comment earlier. Wait, is this a tech fan YouTube? Yeah, but we're going <laughs> to fucking keep it real. Has that not been obvious? I'm going to keep it honest with you. I'm going to keep it a buck. That's why we do this shit. Like, I'm not going to be like another Texas Tech account that just is all the time just saying positive things when Texas Tech's playing like shit, man. Like, they're not, they're, they're playing their worst game in a very long time. Um, and that's just the truth. What do you want me to say? Oh man, Texas Tech could do better. I mean, I, I I don't know, man. I just think the refs aren't on their side. Stop it. Watch the game. They're not playing well. It, it, it's <laughs> yeah. RC, okay. look at the broadcast. There's a dude sleeping in the stands. That's oh, he's faking it. Come on, he's faking it. Hundred percent. It's it's just stop with that. McCaslin's fault. Yeah, He's just I get it. That guy's probably pissed. He had a bet on tech or something. I, I get it. I, no one's happy right now. This is not McCaslin. McCaslin's had a no, fantastic dude. Playing, they're, guys, they're, they're playing their worst game of the year. It, it just I sucks know, at this moment, you know. Like, I know no one wants to hear this. This roster shouldn't even made the tournament. Oh my god, Kerwin. Kerwin three. We're not dead. Maybe Kerwin no. showed up. <laughs> Now is not the time to turn on McCaslin, though. Come on. That's a joke. Yeah, like, that's, that's a joke. Over here, guys. Unless Come you on, can man. state some logical facts you, as to why, don't say that. Common fucking sense. You know what I mean? Jesus. Literally. Oh. It's all hey, good, Balsy. Sorry, Balsy. Thought it was a shot. That's on me. I feel like NC State that's fans have been pretty cool. So and I'm not even. Then Diario. Yeah. I, I, right RC, I'm not going to lie. I think this one's over. But. Yeah, th th that's the th Has Tech gone on a run? No, right? No. I'm not no. missing anything. Like like a 5-0 run probably at tops. And then Kerwin makes one, and then he misses one, and DJ Horn gets the rebound. It is – um, it, 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 it's, it's oh, got to have an air ball for right? Kerwin? Oh, my gosh. Colin, as much as I hate to say it, I kind of – I mean, I don't think this, this roster is like complete dog shit. They're just not that good. It's like plain Whoa. simple. Especially Sorry, when dude, Devin Cambridge went out. At that point, I just saw the Kerwin air ball. Whoa. <laughs> Bad timing on my part. My the roster is not great. If you guys don't understand that, like you just you don't watch enough of the, the team. Roster is not great. Oh, yeah, I mean, they definitely overachieved. Um, 
in a lot of ways. Um, Middle Brooks, by the way, 21 points. Jesus, dude. Ryan, again, if, if you want to say stuff like that, just tell us why. It's about, like, why is McCaslin the problem? Like, dude, come on. Yeah. Ryan, how are we homers? We're just being objective or what are we doing? Being on it. It's been a it's uh, like, yeah, yeah, it is. I'm gonna stop paying attention to those comments. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video on YouTube. Appreciate over seven thousand of y'all tuning in right now. Um, that is freaking awesome. Um, the like on YouTube goes a long way in helping us out. And if you haven't already, go to scarlet and blackinsider.com. We've got the latest on everything transfer portal in terms of the guys that Texas Tech has reached out to and much, much more. Join the fastest growing community of Texas Tech fans over on Scarlet and Black Insider. For $1 for your first month, there's no better time to join as portal season is heating up really, really quick for the Red Raiders. So go join today. All right. Let's see here. There was a shot a chart showing that State and Texas Tech were two of the worst teams at generating positive offensive runs throughout the season. As you guys have said, one team is hit and one is cold. Yeah, that's it. I mean, that's that's really it, right? Like, I mean, like, I give credit to NC State. They have been playing to the level that they have played for for now going on, what, three weeks? Two weeks? Yeah. Probably two weeks. Um, and Texas Tech laid an egg. Let's just call it what it is. I mean, they they laid a fucking egg. And Blake is 100% right. What a missed opportunity. You had a yep. chance. And albeit you had to win another game. And y you had to do that, right? Like in the sense of you would have had to play Oakland. But you had a chance, at least a much better one in theory, if you look at the seating, to potentially play the second weekend in Dallas. And everyone in here um, knows what kind of advantage, once again, in theory, that would be for the Red Raiders. But you have to take care of business, and Texas Tech simply has not. I mean, again, Ben Middlebrooks looks like an all-ACC player tonight. He's like, been the best player on the court. I mean, I mean it's wild, man. I, 21 points. in there, he's been solid. Burns has been – Diara, okay. too, man. Yeah, the, I mean, Diara has been – arguably i think the best player on the floor like he has truly created a shit ton of mismatches um for texas tech yeah. um yeah i mean they've exposed I don't know, man. I'm not, I'm not exposed. the game is over um yeah probably but it's, it's it's probably over it ain't looking good it ain't let's looking good real about it i it, you gotta be quick um let's see vezzy says tech didn't beat themselves they're being out hustled yeah that's what we mean by being aggressive. Like NC State is being far more aggressive tonight in every sense of the game compared to Texas Tech. And the perfect example is, again, the best player on the floor tonight, Ben Middlebrooks. Like he's a hustle guy, and he's absolutely dominating, dominating in every regard of that. Um, Pop Isaacs makes both – or got ahead of myself, actually missed a free throw, made the other one. It is now a – well. 15 point game. Yeah. As NC State gets another bucket. It looks like Texas Tech season is uh coming to a close tonight in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um it's time to focus on the offseason transfer portal. Roster. Yeah, we'll do a we'll do about a 10 minute recap here at the end of the game. So stick around for that. We'll talk about portal a little bit potentially for Texas Tech, but just a um, not ideal performance tonight and a golden opportunity for the Red Raiders. Um, again, 20% from three, man. I mean, I agree, Drew. It, you uh, And then you're missing bunnies. Yeah, I mean, all right. All right. Points in the paint. Holy shit. Did you realize how different that was? I don't have the stat broadcast. What is it? 40 I'm, I'm, to 20. 40 to 20. Yeah, it doesn't sounds about right. Golly. Which is bizarre considering NC State really isn't that great defending the paint. Like, they just really aren't. Um, but, dude, again, they're playing fucking good right now. Texas Tech, what did I say in the pregame? I said, what Texas Tech are we going to get? Are we going to get the Texas Tech that's physical, that's aggressive, that, that goes up for the rebounds, that attacks the paint? 
Or are we going to get the Texas Tech that just kind of lets it come to them? Um, they just got dominated tonight. It's not, I don't know. This roster has been very inconsistent all season. They lost, they got blown out by UCF, who's not even a tournament team, got blown out at home by Texas. This is kind of a similar performance to those in all seriousness. Um, just this roster has been very inconsistent. To answer a question in the chat, um, the rebounding battle is even. Wild. Yeah. You wouldn't know it by the score, obviously, but no. Texas now pressing as they should with about three minutes to go. Down 13, foul on Darion Williams with 258 remaining. Um, Diaria makes his first free throw. It's back to a 15 point game. And that one's probably all she wrote. Yeah, um, it's all she wrote. Going to be a lot, a lot of questions. Um, I don't Texas. think people can. I don't know, John. I don't think pe people continue like continuously say next year. I mean, Texas Tech had a bad year last year, but they were in the Sweet 16 the year before that. Final Four. I mean, this team has had more success than most teams. Um, first year head coach this year. Obviously, this is an extremely disappointing. Like this is a this is a dog shit game. I don't know how else to say it, but what do you like? What are you supposed to do? Yeah, it's, I mean, there's not really any positives here. Um, so Tucson from three, rebound NC State. Tech also got <laughs> stuck with the absolute juggernaut at the 11 seed. I mean, here's the thing, man. Like, credit to NC State for sure, and we'll break it down here in just a little bit in terms of the post game and everything. Um, I mean, I, I – I just – it didn't look like Texas Tech was, you know, really any kinds of aggressive um, – Eric, what are we talking about? 11 seed, not good, LOL. Multiple 11 seeds have already won today. This is what? the most common – this is the most common upset, quote-unquote. I'm pretty sure three 11 seeds have won today. This is going to be the third 11. Yeah. I, and and to be fair, I think uh, – I don't know if juggernaut was the right word to – be fair to Austin, but for NC the State, fucking team in the country, arguably right now, I and you can't debate that. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I I don't know why Colin thinks that's like a funny take. I mean, they literally just beat a one seed in UNC, and what is Duke a four seed? I believe so. Yeah, they also beat Virginia, who is also that in the tournament, and they also beat Syracuse. That ice cream looked good. On that the did look good. Did you see it? Looks good. It does look good. It's funny yeah. though. It's just like, dude, like, just go look at the stats. Like, they're fucking playing good right now. Like, you can't deny that. I don't know. Yes, Texas Tech sucked tonight, but don't take it away from NC State. Like, this is a good team. Yeah. No, I mean, it's uh, it is what it is on that front. Um, they deserve I mean, the credit tonight, man. Like, truly, don't take it away from them. truly a dominating performance by NC State. And really, every aspect of the game, um, I think that that's a good point, though, by Renee, in the sense that Tech just didn't compete, and they did not adjust their competitive level really at all. I can agree with that take. Um, did they compete? Sure. But did they compete as much as NC State and show that want? I think that it's fair to question, although I don't really like doing it too much. Um, I, I personally, when I look at games like this, it's when did the, you know, the switch flip basically in terms of the mindset and the aggressiveness. It never did. Like it just never did for Texas Tech. Um, and maybe, maybe 7,500 people in here want to tell me differently. Um, but I mean, Let's be real. Pop played bad tonight. Um, he was vastly inefficient from three. I think he's, what, one of ten. Um, Darion, not crazy effective either shooting. Kerwin was non-existent. Um, Chance McMillan, not really that there anyway either. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, eight points. Like, it is what it is. And then um, Warren and Rob, 
more so Warren struggled down low. Um, I mean, it, it's one of those deals where you could see the tangible adjustments that Texas Tech tried to make as a coaching staff. You could see it. But there's there's something I've said all year long, Austin, and I'm I'm pretty sure you're going to agree with me. Texas Tech is a live or die by the three team. And listen, they, they died tonight. Like, in that sense, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just the truth. And um, I'm not saying I like it. I know you don't like it. I know everybody else doesn't like it. And, Kevin, I think it's fair to call it embarrassing. I really do in yeah. a lot of fronts. Um, do I think there were some positives? Yeah, I mean, Joe was a positive tonight. Um, I think it was good Warren got back on the court, but, I mean – it's just a bad game overall. Um, Kerwin for three here. A little too late for Texas Tech. 12-point lead with a minute to go for NC State. They try and foul. They get the ball. It is Texas Tech ball. So there you go. Pop Isaacs gets off a three. Misses. Kerwin Walton gets the rebound. Texas Tech. Nine-point game off of a Kerwin Walton three. Maybe we just need to talk more shit about him. <laughs> I think everyone's overanalyzing what we're saying. Like no one's making excuses for them. I, oh, I well, hey, that that's welcome to my comment section, man. Yeah, no, no, I, I know. I, every day. I'm down for the challenge. Like if you have a reasonable point, put it in the chat. Like why is McCaslin had a non-successful year after what happened last year with the roster he has? That's my whole thing. And Kerwin Walton just fouled out. Yeah, you're right, Tim. The, the front court is absolutely feasted on this team. Absolutely. No, no, no. That, that, that's what won them the game. Yeah. Their front court was exponentially um, better in every yeah. metric you look at that matters in a basketball game, in a stat sheet, let alone aggressiveness. I mean, again, Ben Middlebrooks, I don't know his career high. I'm sure somebody will correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong but I'd be damn sure hard pressed to find a game where he scored 21 or more in college. No, I mean, he, he was sensational. He hit um, his, uh, he tied his season high in the first half RC. Yeah. That's 14 points in the first half bonkers. If you're watching yeah. on YouTube, about 250 of y'all on there, be sure to like the video. I know this game isn't going the way that you thought it would, but helps us out. If you've enjoyed this tonight, please press that like button. Please show us some love over on Twitter as well. We will be having a post game once this game is done. Just a yep. quick little, probably, I don't know, eight to 10 minute one, uh, just to get some analysis, look at the stats and everything. Um, and then we'll go off. Pretty successful though here, Austin. You think we got to yep. 20K overall? We've been pretty steady at about 7,500 for the it's past been hour. Solid, man. I, I think we'd have more if Texas Tech was was playing better. Um, but you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I'd love to I'd love to talk with you guys in the chat and and have some level heads and figure out, hey, this is what Texas Tech needs to do to turn things around. The, the roster, I think we can all agree that this roster just isn't it. You you have maybe one okay defender, but guys, go look at the stats. Joe Toussaint is not a good defender. Like statistically, he's not. Go look at the efficiency levels. Like he's just not that good of a defender. You had some good shooters this year, but your size was dog shit. Your front court, not very good. Um, this roster had a lot of flaws and they got exposed tonight. Like they also got exposed against UCF. They also got absolutely demolished against Texas in Lubbock. Um, these oh, are man. things that have happened multiple times this season. I don't know why this is a shocker. This roster has like they've played much better than their expectations at times this year, um, but it is what it is, man. Our NC State way better team tonight, way better. And it's official. The it's Wolfpack official. will move on. It'll be a double-digit seed matchup for a spot in the Sweet Sixteen between Oakland and the NC State Wolfpack, and the Red Raiders' season ends up in Pittsburgh by a score of 80 to 67. We will recap it here in just a second. We'll read some comments real quick as well. I'm just trying to get all how many how many unread texts do you think I have right now? Um I had my phone on do not disturb by the way. So 
How many do you think I had? Oof, I don't know, man. I I don't know. I got a lot to everyone in the chat frustrated. Um, bro, this Miller time locks guy. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> it's you fine. and I. You and I are gonna have to hop hey, on a Discord hey, call after you, or something, and we're gonna have to talk about it because I, I, I just don't get to, it. You want me to help you with this? Sometimes, no, I'm just genuinely curious. Like, you gotta, you gotta let it go. Yeah, it's not always Miller time for some people, apparently. Fire so Dave Smart is his goal. Um, but all right, Darren, you better be trolling. By the way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let y'all know what we're about to do in terms of the business here, because uh, it. let's talk about uh, it, guys. Well, here, 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 here in a little bit, I should say, we'll talk for another about ten minutes, and then. We'll do it. There will be a hard cut. <laughs> that is for me. So I can make another video later. There you go. Okay. Hard. I'm just letting y'all know what's going on here. I don't care. Um, all right. Let's get to the comments here. Um, Tech needs a player who can take over when needed. Pop isn't that guy. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I know people were critical of Pop before tonight. I, they're going to be extra critical going into the off season. There's no doubt about yeah. that. It's fair. Uh, Is it fair? Like, I've been critical about Pop this year. And I think that I'm okay. I just saw Miller's comment. I'll, 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 I'll <laughs> you can't look at the no, I'll respond to that in a second. I'll He's respond to that. In a He's no, in no. head. He's really not. I just, I, I wish that we could have a talk back and forth. But, um, I do think that there is some criticism to be had for Pop Isaacs. And it's not, it's not that, like, okay. There's to one side of the story. Yes, this team would be way worse without Pop Isaacs. Take him off the roster. This team is definitely more than likely not in the tournament, right? Um, I think it's probably but there's also a point to be said that he's had incredibly and in high, uh, you know, volume metrics this season and has been very inconsistent at times. I think that's fair. Um, and a lot of people are asking, like, hey, is, is Pop the guy? Like, is Pop the guy that you want to have all that volume on the team? So here's my thing. Like, if you just take Pop off the team and you don't replace him with someone that can score, this team's in a significantly worse place. But like, what are you guys trying to say in the chat? Like, is there like are you are you proposing that tech finds a better, like or a, a stronger lead guard? Or are you just saying that the team is worse without Pop? Because that's kind of like where I'm at. I, I think the team is significantly better with Pop, but I do think that, you know. He's inconsistent. Like, I think that's a fair critique. I, yeah. Um, I don't I don't think he's the main problem, though. No, I don't either. I think, it's very, I think he's the easy one to blame. Yeah. Um, but I, I think overall, I mean, it's one of those deals for me personally where, you know, I, I, I look at, kind of more in depth at it, right? Like, yes, again, pop is very easy to like nitpick and not like as a player in terms of he is inconsistent, but when he's on, he's what a top seven player in the toughest league in America. Right. But when he's off, he's, <laughs> it's hard to watch. I, I think the problem is, and I think Jake hit the nail on the head. You're too fucking small. Like yeah. period. Yeah. That's what the issue is. You got exposed by a team tonight that had three versatile bigs that absolutely bodied the shit out of you. That's what happened, okay? Like, Diaria had an all-time performance type night, okay? 17 points, 12 rebounds. It felt like he had more of an impact defensively even than his stats showed with his length, okay? That's the thing for Texas Tech. They just don't have a lot of length, and I get it from this standpoint. I, I understand. Be critical of Pop. I, I Be critical of anyone you want. Um, it is what it is. But at the same time, I think it's very, very short-sighted just to blame one individual for this tonight because are you yeah. going to – the Pop? it's Pop Isaac's fault for how Texas Tech got absolutely, like, just abused in the paint? Yeah. You going to say that? Yeah. Our, our they doubled the point total in the paint. Like, they absolutely just worked you to yep. death. I get it. He took bad shots. So did Joe. Why aren't we being critical of that? Because he had 16. Joe had bad turnovers, too. Like, 
I'm not saying you aren't justified in being upset at Pop Isaacs. And I think Noah brings up maybe the best point anybody has so far. Shooting percentages is a reason to be frustrated. He shot 35% from the field and 30% from three. That is a reason and justifiably so because of data and watching the games to be frustrated. That said, if you are solely blaming Pop Isaacs for this loss, what the fuck did you just watch? You got abused. You got abused by somebody called him a defensive tackle. Yeah, you did. And then what's even worse is you got abused by a guy that's probably majoring in accounting and going to work at a major law firm in two years and Ben Middlebrooks. I might have to hire him as my attorney. Bro, that guy may have – he may have worse stats than fucking Brock Cunningham. I don't know. I mean, this dude just put on a he fucking frustrated. heater I, against him. And again, a little bit of a tangent, 8K people in here, whatever, um, from the standpoint of like me going on a tangent. By the way, I appreciate all 8,000 of y'all right now watching. But um, like seriously, I, I, I'm okay with people being critical if it's justified, right, in the sense of don't don't name call anybody. Like grow the hell up in that regard, right? Like if you want to say pop was bad tonight, by all means, I'm going to agree with you. And I think the first person that would say he was bad tonight is Pop Isaacs, okay? But at the same time, did Kerwin play well? Did Chance play well? Did Warren play well? Who played well on this Texas Tech team? And the other thing is this. If you're blaming Coach McCaslin right now, I, I don't I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, it's clear as day Texas Tech has the right coach. Um, it's just you had arguably your worst shooting night of the year in your most important game, and you had no paint presence whatsoever. Zero. I mean, again, they doubled you up in the paint. That's the reason you lost the game, okay? That's the reason. They had better looks from closer, and you felt like you had to jack up some shots. And it wasn't just Pop. It was Joe it was Kerwin. It was all of them. Okay. So you have to think that way too. But again, I, I I know what a fan is. So like, I know it's a fanatic. You think, you know, irresponsibly or, you know, irrationally sometimes, and it's totally okay. I get it. But just be justified a little bit in the argument in the sense of, yes, Joe did not, or Pop did not play well. But why aren't we looking at what happened in the paint? Like, that's the reason you lost this game. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't know any other way to say it. No, you're right. RC, you're totally right. Guys, Pop Isaacs is a stud. Like, give him an actual – give him a wing. Give him an actual fucking five-man. Give, give him DJ Burns and DJ Horn, and let's see how good he is. Like, Pop has essentially had to put the team on his back for a lot of the season – and when you're the guy and you're having the kind of volume numbers that he has, all of the blame is always going to fall on you. That's just how it goes. It's easy to sit here and blame Pa, blame this person, blame the other. Like, guys, look at the roster. The moment Devin Cambridge went out, this team became one of the most unathletic teams in the entire conference of the Big 12. That was just a fact. Then Warren Washington went out. It became even more unathletic. It became even shorter. Guys, like... This roster simply was not built to go on a Elite Eight kind of run. McCas I mean, they they got to where they were. That's fine. This was a disappointing loss. But at the end of the day, like, just try to keep it reasonable. Like, the loss isn't all on Pop. The loss isn't all on one player. Like, the season, you know, it came together as it did. And this is, I don't know. This is just, this wasn't the, this wasn't the game for them. I will say this too. Um I'll say an apology. I'm not trying to tell y'all how to feel as fans. I'm really not. I, I, I'm just not about the name calling of players. Be yeah. critical, guys, but don't be a dick. I think it's really just that that easy for me to say. Um, let's get in here. Um, Coach Gas needs to acknowledge that Tech needs bigs. Wholeheartedly agree, Tom. Um, I can't name one person who played well for Tech tonight, except for maybe Chance. Did Chance even play well? No. Well, I mean, he played, he played okay. I, but that's probably the best you're going to say about anybody is they played okay. Yeah. You know, like Joe is probably the one I'd go with, but he also had some just head scratching turnovers. Um, Noah says Grant getting this roster to a six seed is impressive. I, yeah. 
I agree wholeheartedly. Um, it just sucks that you had your worst shooting night of the year tonight. Um, then we've got Ryan. We need a Bryson Williams type big who can shoot in the mid range. Good luck finding one of them. They don't really uh, make a lot of those. Dude, I'll take a Bryson Williams like today. I'm down. Yeah. Um, well, I think too, and, and Ethan brings up your Devin Cambridge point, and we'll talk about this and then we'll go into um, the recap video. The thing that I think Devin Cambridge and losing him hurt the most for Texas Tech is the fact that now you had to play guys out of position, right? Like in terms of the roles that they had coming into the year. And they capitalized on it and were good for stretches of it. But there's almost only so much you can expect from somebody in a role that's not designed for them, right? Devin Cambridge would have hid so many flaws for this team. Yeah. I mean, so many flaws. He's experienced. He's a wing. He, I mean, you saw it early on in non con, and I get it. You were playing, you know, the right side of the street, 7 Eleven University. I get it. But your team just looks so much better with him at the five spot. And, um, you know, it's just one of those deals, man, where at the end of the day, it sucks. You didn't have them during Big 12 play, and there's, there'll be somebody who said, you had the whole Big 12 slate to figure that out. Well, it's like, yeah, you did, but this isn't the NBA, man. You can't trade for somebody. So once you lose a dude, he's gone. Oh, and by the way, you lost two other guys on your roster, too, that could potentially have helped you. Potentially, I say, right? Technically, three. So, like, again... By no means am I trying to make excuses. I'm not. I'm just trying to be reasonable in the way of thinking. Like, if you look at this roster, I think Noah said it best. To get it to a six seed in the best conference in America and you finish tied for third is impressive as hell. It just sucks that you shit the bed against the team that played really, really well um, in NC State. And again, I can't get over the paint total, man. I really can't. I that, that That's bonkers to me how bad Texas Tech was in defending the paint tonight. Yeah, I agree. Um, It was bad. I mean, it, again, though, like, guys, it's just – it's a matter of – it's just personnel. Like, NC State had three dudes that are 6, 9, and over that played really good tonight – Texas Tech, Warren Washington looked bad. I think the one critique you could probably throw at McCaslin tonight is like, why didn't Emily Yalahu, uh, Yalaho touch the court tonight, right? Like, Texas Tech had looked pretty good with him on the court. He didn't play at all tonight. You know, Warren Washington got a lot of run, even when he was struggling. Um, but other than that, like, I don't know. This was a matchup flaw. Like, like there's a reason Diara feasted. There's a reason Middlebrooks feasted. You guys think they just miraculously had the best games of their career just randomly? No. Like, Texas Tech struggles in the front court. They got dominated tonight. They've made up for it against teams that don't have the depth in the front court that NC State does. But, I mean, NC State has three guys in the front court, Diara, Middlebrooks, and Burns. I mean, we focus so much attention heading into the game, RC, on Burns. And look look at who feasted against us. Neither of – it wasn't Burns. It was Middlebrooks and it was Diara. So – um, I don't know. You could sit here and you can complain all you want. Like this, this loss sucks. Like, I mean, neither of us are happy. Like this sucks. You know, Texas tech had a clear path to the sweet 16. They were going to play Oakland next game. Um, but just is what it is, man. Um, not a good roster. I wasn't re very high on this roster, especially after Cambridge got hurt. And, uh, Warren Washington looked really bad tonight, man. Unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, he just looked rusty, and I think that that was yeah. to be expected. But um, if that that would probably be my critique too. Um, if I had to give one to Coach McCaslin, was like, hey, like I, I think it was pretty apparent that Warren wasn't himself tonight. Like, play a Melly a little bit, just see what yeah. happens. It's not going to hurt you. I mean, you you weren't doing anything in terms of stopping him in the lane anyway. You might as well try something new. Um, but that's really my only critique. Um, all right, what we'll do is this. We're going to do an instant reaction video. This will go – you're listening to it live now, but it will also go out on the channel tomorrow if you want to listen to it again. And what we're going to do is this. I think we've talked about this game quite a bit. We'll talk about it just a little bit, maybe three or four more minutes. And then we're going to make this basically a Q&A. 
in the sense that we'll do about a 12 minute video of Q and A in the sense of answering your questions. Like, let's see here, um, what's our NIL fund look like? We'll answer stuff like that. Bear with us for about three minutes. We're doing a video, people. Um, so yeah, all right. Texas Tech loses 80-67 in the first round of the NCAA tournament to the Wolfpack of NC State. I'm joined by Austin Massey of the Scarlet and Black Insider here on this recap video where the Red Raiders season comes to an end up in Pittsburgh after a, I think to say the least, a disappointing loss, Austin, when it comes to the Red Raiders. And uh, we were live throughout the whole game. The comment section was lively. We'll get to it here in just a second. But overall, what are your thoughts about this game? Because, again, we've got the scoreboard up. People can see some of the stats. Um, what really stood out to you about this game for the Red Raiders? In a, and, and, and quite frankly, just a very, very disappointing loss. Yeah. Um, first off, very disappointing loss. Um, credit to NC State. I thought they played very well tonight. They didn't shoot themselves in the foot. I said that all night. They pretty much controlled the pace of the game all night too. Defensively, I think that they played much better than they played for a lot of the season. They're not a very good defense uh, statistically. Um, just bullied Texas Tech, quite frankly. Um, the, the front court of NC State, I mean, even to say dominated RC, I think would be an understatement. Like it, it was a complete demolition in the front court. Um, Burns, uh, Middlebrook, Diara. They had their way with Texas Tech. There's just literally no other way around it. Um, you could point the finger at all of, you know these different Texas Tech players, but at the end of the day, they wanted it more. They played a lot harder. They had more dudes that made plays. Um, and, and Texas Tech just kind of put up a dud of a performance in, in, in a, a time where really they couldn't afford to do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, again, we, we, we talked about it a little bit, but you just brought it up as well. Um, the performance of not just the bigs, because a lot more goes into it when a team just thoroughly outclasses you um, in the paint, like North Carolina State did. Texas Tech, that's still on the guards, too, to some degree. Um, really just an overall team defense. I, I, I just thought Texas Tech was, I mean, to keep it blunt, just really fucking bad. Um, at just making them uncomfortable defensively. It felt like NC State, outside of maybe five plays, was just very comfortable the whole night, right? Yep. Getting to their spots, not with ease necessarily all the time, but it felt like ease. And then when they do get there, Texas Tech is out of position um, in the sense of whether that's the bigs, most notably the guards, because I thought the guards really struggled in the sense of helping some of the bigs. Now, the bigs just most of the time struggled, and you just look at the stats. I mean, again, Diaria, Middlebrooks, and Burns. You look at their totals together. I mean, we're talking about damn near as many points as the Red Raiders scored as a team. Yeah. Just from those three guys. Um, and so that's the thing that stands out. And then also, you really just could not afford to have your worst shooting night of the year. Yeah. Um for reference, North Carolina State, as you can see on your screen, shot 38.5% from three. You shot 38.7% from the field. Okay. That that's just that that's not gonna cut it. Um, you weren't aggressive um at all. It felt like at times you were very, very stagnant and just okay with the tough contested shots, whether that was from pop, whether that was chance, Darion, the list goes down the line that's really what stands out to me from this texas tech loss and we're about to get to some questions here in just a second but before we do if you haven't already be sure to hit that subscribe button and like the video if you want to stay in the know on texas tech men's basketball all year long we are going to have you up to date on everything transfer portal here when it comes to the red raiders and as we know it's modern college basketball so the transfer portal is a must know we're not only going to keep you up to date right here on the Back to 12 podcast, but go head on over to the Scarlet and Black Insider where you can subscribe for one month and it's a dollar. We're going to keep you up to date on everything. Jacob Harris, Austin are already doing a great job on that. 
So if you want to stay in the know on Texas Tech men's basketball during what's going to be a crazy portal period for the Red Raiders, and we'll talk about it here in just a second in terms of all these questions we have in the comments right now, you can do so over at the Scarlet and Black Insider.com. Again, first month is $1. All right, we're going to switch up the background here um, real quick for us, and there we go. Sorry, you have to see our up-close faces now, specifically mine. I won't apologize for Austin. That's more of a hidden thing if he wants to apologize. Um, all right, let's get to the comments here, though. We'll spend about the next 10 minutes talking these questions, and then we're going to head out of here because, let's face it, it's about to be midnight. I want to go to sleep at the time of this recording. I'm old. I'm about to be 30 for those that watch this thing. All right, we'll start with Grant. He asked, what's our NIL fund look like? Money is the name of the new game. Excuse me. Austin, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that Texas Tech's in a great shape in NIL front. Um, I, I talked about it earlier at halftime. The Matador Club is doing really good things. Guys, Grant McCaslin had to hire an entire fucking staff on top of recruiting players, on top of trying to retain players, on top of all these other things. Like, stop. Come on. Like, let's be realistic here. Um, Grant McCaslin did a damn good job in his first offseason. Please tell me another coach that would have come in and done any better with this roster. I would love to hear it. Um, my my honest outlook on the NIL front, though, is Texas Tech's in a great shape. Um, I think that, you know, head on over to the Scarlet and Black Insider. We've already posted every single person that Texas Tech has reached out to. They are going after guys with size that are physical, that are old, and that can rebound. Do you think that that is by coincidence? No, it's not. Um, th this team has a clear problem being physical. They have gotten roughed up by physical teams all year. There's a reason why Houston has dominated this team every single time we play them. There's a reason why Iowa State dominated this team. There's a reason why UCF was a really tough matchup. Cincinnati, those are all physical teams. Texas Tech has struggled with physical teams. Guess what? NC State played damn physical tonight. Um, so, as a kind of just as someone who covers Texas Tech and recruiting, I think you will see a shift next this offseason. I think you will see Grant McCaslin specifically go after length. I think it doesn't take a rocket scientist to kind of state that. Um, go after length, go after getting older and, and, and just getting better, stronger on the boards, getting stronger in general. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that really the versatility aspect, I think you're going to see them go after a lot of guys. Um, and that can move into our next question in terms of what does it look like in the portal aspect of it? I know you already started some of it. I mean, I think you're going to see them target more guys like Devin Cambridges and stuff like that. Now, obviously, those guys are going to be hot commodities, um, and that's where NIL comes into play, but also the fact that, again, Texas Tech has proven, Grant McCaslin has, that he wins everywhere he goes. That's going to be appealing, and with the resources that Texas Tech has, They'll be in a good position to land some really, really good, talented guys. Now, who goes into the portal? I mean, the game just ended at the time of this recording. Who knows at that point? Um, I do want to say this, though, about this team this year, because you talked about it in the sense of Grant McCaslin. I think they overachieved. There's no doubt about that. But we got to talk about what some of these guys went through injury-wise, too. I, I think people forget Pop Isaacs was – fighting through lower body injuries all year, right? Robert Jennings, he was literally a month late to starting camp because a hamstring injury, okay? Like, again, I'm not trying to say that injuries are – or make an excuse or anything like that, but I do think that that is something to consider here. And they still did this. You lose a guy that's a starter, okay? And Devin Cambridge, he does not play a single second in the Big 12. Then you lose Warren Washington for seven games, technically nine because he missed one with the flu um, or two with the flu, I think. So you got that. OK, so you lose one, two of your starters, not to mention Darion and other guys battled the flu. You had that, what, three, four game stretch like to get here was downright damn near like a miracle almost in a way with the talent that this roster possessed. And again, People will call it an excuse. I really don't give a shit. I think that these guys balled out this year. And, and you have every right, fans, to be upset with the performance in the first round. You should feel whatever you feel, feel that way. But know that Grant McCaslin and crew are going to better this roster. Some of these guys are going to be back. 
we, I mean, it is what it is. Who knows at this point in the sense of the portal and NIL and everything like that. Um, it, it, it's just, you know, Hey man, like it's, it's frustrating. This is a frustrating loss, but CP asked, what's your expectations for next year? Um, I, I think this roster is going to be much improved. Obviously health has to go your way. Um, that's, that's first and foremost. I, I think that this Austin, I feel very, very comfortable saying this. The next year's roster will be much better than this year's um, because now you think about it. And again, sounds like an excuse, but and people weren't happy about it. But McCaslin came into this job late. Remember, he went into the NIT. He took the job. Really, I believe it's a year ago today. Yeah, no, not even, RC. Not I even. Not even a year ago. Okay. No, um, I, I don't think that I don't think the NIT finished till early April. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. Um, so he was late on it, got his coaching staff late, but there was another question in here talking about the coaching staff, Austin. I don't know how you feel about it, but I think this is a great coaching staff. I hope it stays together. Um, now obviously things change and we know the coaching carousel happens even with assistance as well. Um, but I, I think when it comes down to it, like this is a really good staff. And I think McCaslin and crew are going to get a lot more size, as you mentioned. And I think that this roster is going to vastly improve. And you're going to see some guys return. You're going to see some guys go in the portal. That's the nature of the beast. Um, but I do think one thing is abundantly clear. Abundantly clear. Be upset. I'm 100% for it. Absolutely be upset with that performance. But Texas Tech got the guy. And that's the biggest thing is they got Grant McCaslin, and that's a big deal in my opinion. And this coaching staff is good as well. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, it's an elite coaching staff. You know, everyone can sit here and and put in the comments excuses, excuses like, all right, like, so what what, what do you guys propose? Fire Grant McCaslin tonight? Is that you? Th you think that's what we should do? Um, that's an absolute joke. I, I can't take people like that seriously. Um, this has been a good season. I think it's fair to say, hey, was the roster constructed properly? No, it wasn't. Um, but guess what? There were no bigs in the portal last offseason. That's that's well, literally a fact. You got one. You got one. He got failed one. a medical. You People beat forget that. Like, yeah. Also, by the way, you complain about them not having size. You realize if you would have got that other big, you don't have Joe Toussaint? You got to think about this. Connect dots, people, Like in that regard. Who would you rather have, a backup big or Joe Toussaint? I think the answer is very clear. Sorry. Go ahead, Austin. No, you're right. No, I'm just I'm just saying, guys, like no one's making excuses. We're just simply trying to outline why Texas Tech lost tonight and not simply just blame individuals because this is a team sport. The coaching staff got beat up tonight. The the team got beat up tonight. But when you really look at it, like this team had major deficiencies. Like there's a reason why Texas Tech gave up an insane amount of 10-0 runs all season this year. Like there's a reason for that. There's a reason why Texas Tech had to come back. How many games, RC, this year did Texas Tech come back in the last five minutes and win when they were down like nine points? It happened. I know for a fact it happened against Kansas State, and I yeah. know for a fact it happened against TCU. You probably should have lost both those games, like just being dead honest. Um, this team overperformed for the roster they had. That's the only point I'm trying to make. Yes, they sucked tonight. Like tonight was pathetic. There's no other way around it. But I'm just trying to say my outlook moving forward is there's a lot to be positive about. I think that McCaslin has to regroup. They have to look at what their, their flaws this year. What were their flaws? They were not very good in the front court. They got bullied on like, you know, physically. Um, those are two things I would expect them to shore up this off season. And there's really not much else to that. Yeah, no, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I think if, if you think we're making excuses, that's just one of the things where yeah. That sounds like you got to deal with that on that front. Um, I think we're just being real about it and not trying to be homers, just trying to be objective as well, at least as much as we possibly can um, in that regard. Um, Stu Pack TTU says it's legit that we got 20 plus wins. Yeah. I mean, you have a winner in Grant McCaslin. Again, be upset at that performance at Texas Tech like th that they had against NC State. Be upset. You should 100%. Be critical of the players. Don't call them names or anything, but like Pop is going to be the first one to admit he played bad. Like, 
what else do you want him to say? How is he going to change it? Right. I think that the key point that you brought up there, Austin, that I think is critical is the self-evaluation aspect of this yeah. from the Texas Tech standpoint in the sense of the prior coaching staff would not have looked themselves in the mirrors and said, we have to change some of our philosophies. They would have stayed in the box and said, no, these players have to adjust to us. This coaching staff with Grant McCaslin, however, goes in and says, okay, we have what we want to do. We're going to go try and recruit that. But we're going to let the players dictate to us what we need to do. And they did that all year to the best of their abilities. Perfect example, in my opinion, is RJ. I mean, a guy that, listen, again, probably a guy that will be the first to tell you probably didn't have his best game tonight um, against NC State. But look at his development and Kerwin's development. Like those two guys just succeeded drastically with Grant McCaslin in terms of their role, right? Um, I, I just think it's one of those deals where realistic expectations are key. And I understand that fans don't have them a lot of times and that's hard to do. And listen, I get it wholeheartedly. I really, really do. Um, Tech has the right guy. They're going to be super aggressive in the portal. They're going to go out and be self-aware Go get guys. Are they going to get every guy that you want? No. <laughs> be ready for that. You're going to be upset like, damn it, Kansas got a guy I wanted. That's going to happen. But you have the right guy in Grant. Be upset about this loss, as you should be. They, you know, um, lost a chance to really have a chance to go and play in the Sweet 16 in Dallas. Instead, it'll be Oakland or NC State. Um, this from Grant. This will be the last question, and then we'll wrap it up here. Um, what do y'all expect from the portal? Who stays, who goes? Chance and D5 to lock in for next year because transfer rules, dot, 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 right? That from Grant. Austin, you want to address that one? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, actually, uh, someone on, on Twitter uh, who who's at the game and is was in the press conference, uh, post-game press conference, actually, I'll pull it up really quick. But actually, there was some news announced that, um, you know, Chance McMillan actually stated that he's going to be back um, at Texas Tech. He's planning to come to Texas Tech next year and use his fifth year of el eligibility. Pop Isaacs also said he expects to be back next season. That's according to Cole Banker um, of Red Raider Nation, um, KMC News. So, again, I mean, that's take it huge. all for – Yeah, that's, that's huge. huge. That's huge. I mean, that's, that's significant. Those are all Big 12 type players. Yeah, exactly. Like, let's – again, we, we can have these different philosophical debates all night long about, oh, my gosh, Pop's the reason we lost. No, it's not. Go look at the front court. What, what did you expect? Pop to guard Middlebrooks, Diara, and Burns all at once? Like, no. Come on, guys. Um, defense obviously crushed us tonight. Yes, Pop wasn't very good offensively. Um, but the reality is Texas Tech's got to get longer, man. They got to get more physical. They got to get some dudes. Like, let's go back to what that – that Texas Tech team that made the final four in the national championship. What was that team, RC? They weren't, they had dudes that could get buckets, but they were freaking physical, man. And they were, they would beat you up. You know what I mean? Like they would, they took it to you. This team doesn't take it to you. They really haven't done it all season. They had a couple good defensive games all year. Yeah, Pop can't defend, but he's one of the best scorers in the Big 12. He wasn't that great tonight. Um, but Pop's not supposed to be an all Big 12 defender. Grant McCaslin has to surround Pop with other guys that can play better defense. Um, Kerwin Walton, not a good defender. Uh, Darian Williams is an okay defender. Warren Washington, not a good defender. Um, I agree, John. Two athletic bigs away from a championship team. I completely agree. Um, you really need to get a center this offseason, just to go back to RC's point. You need a center this year. Um, you know, Preferably someone that's athletic, that's strong in the paint. Warren Washington is kind of this springy, kind of skinny um, center. I don't think that fit what this team needed this year necessarily. Um, they got him obviously, you know, he was great for, for a good amount of the season. Um, but you need a center. I think you need, you also need a driver. Like, let's talk about that. Like tonight, Texas tech kind of got bullied by NC state. You need a guy that can attack the paint. You need that like Zurich Phelps kind of guy or Milos Uzan kind of kid that can attack the paint that can finish around the rim. That's strong, athletic, you didn't have that is the moment Devin Cambridge went out. Um, so look for Texas Tech. It's it's really not rocket science, guys. Get more athletic, get taller. 
That's literally it. Get 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 a couple guys that can play defense, and I really do think that Texas Tech will be in a good spot. If you bring back Pop, you bring back Darian, you bring back Chance, you bring back Rob, Amili. Guys, I'm telling you right there, like just from a pop sure. chance and Darion perspective, that's an elite foundation in the Big yes. 12. Yep. Like, I don't care what your thoughts are on pop. I don't care what your thoughts are on, on Darion. I don't care what your thoughts are on chance. Like, tape don't lie. There can, some of them can be frustrating more so than others. I get it. But they're all Big 12 type players. Um, and pop proved that this year. So did Darion. And it would not shock me if chances now. Austin brought up the length aspect of it. I think a high priority in the portal for Texas Tech as well has to be a lead guard um, because I think Pop is much better off the ball. I think Chance is much better off the ball. So I would love to see them attack a veteran type guard that, you know, has got two or three years experience in college basketball. Um, but I'm telling you right now, again, a lot of things can change in the portal, right? A lot, a lot. Guys can say they're coming back and then they don't. But if you do, have Chance McMillan, Pop Isaacs, and then Darion Williams, you'll figure the fucking rest out. I'm telling you that right now. That is an elite foundation. You're going to have two guys on there, and Pop Isaacs and Darion Williams, that will be preseason all Big 12 players, and maybe even Chance too, depending on how that goes in terms of his projected role, right? So again, I get the frustration I really, really do. Austin and I will have more conversations like this. We've been on for four hours straight now. I haven't taken a bathroom break. It's crazy. Um, I don't know how I did that, but it is what it is. Um, I appreciate every t everybody tuning in to the live. And for those that aren't watching this from the live perspective or watching it the next day, we're at 8,700 strong right now tuning into this. So I really appreciate each and every single one of y'all. It was a ton, a ton of fun. Austin, you got anything on the way out, man? Um, no, I, I, I one last comment. Uh, people were like, hey, you know, all three of those players aren't good defenders. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that. I don't think Pop is a very high level defender. I think Chance is formidable. Um, Darian, I think, is is really good. He's just been asked to kind of guard, kind of, he's kind of had to overextend himself this year defensively. Then what Again, he really he's the guy that was taken out of his role when Devin got hurt. He was the exactly. big one. He still succeeded. Exactly. Yeah. Like, like Darian's very good at defending guys in the paint. He's not very good if you get him moving like vertically defensively. Um, so guys, the, the whole point is you surround your playmakers with defenders. Like it, it's not rocket science. Once again, um, go look at all the best teams in the country. They have guys that can score and they also have defenders. Like it's, it's really not that hard. It's the same formula that Texas tech got to the national championship with. They had scorers and Matt Mooney and Jarrett Culver Moretti, and then they surrounded them with defenders, right? Obviously some of those guys could play defense as well. Um, but ideally guys go look at who Texas techs already fucking are already reaching out to in the portal right now. They're, they're all lengthy defenders. Um, and that's exactly what I would expect McCaslin to go after. So I'll just kind of leave it at that. Yeah. Speaking of Matt Mooney, you can go listen to uh, my interview with him over on the Scarlet and Black Insider. Your first month is $1 over there. And we're going to keep you up to date on everything transfer portal for Texas Tech as soon as it happens. Jacob and Austin are on top of that. I'll help in as well. Uh, be making videos about everything you need to know. So if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like the video hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. And if you're on Twitter, you can go follow Austin at Austin Massey SBI. And you can follow me at RCMB 323. Again, a four hour live. We peaked Austin at over 9,000 people at one time. Red Raider Nation, even in a night that um, didn't go Texas Tech's way, absolutely showed a ton of love and we appreciate each and every one of y'all for tuning in we'll have plenty of portal coverage and it won't start tomorrow or well it will start tomorrow i was going to say it won't start in a week it'll start tomorrow i should probably get my words together it's been a long four hours man um but appreciate everybody tuning in he's austin i'm rc thanks once again for tuning in to this live broadcast where the red raiders season comes to an end with an 80 to 67 loss to the NC State Wolfpack, Texas Tech, and Grant McCaslin, albeit ending on a sour note, his year number one out in the 806 was nothing short of a success. We'll catch you next time here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.